Are you a builder, remodeler, or homeowner? If so, you need quality materials at the right price. Whether you're just getting started or a seasoned pro, Von Tobel's friendly and knowledgeable staff can help. And since we're 100% employee-owned, every time you come in, you're dealing with an owner. We have a great selection for kitchen, bath, flooring, decking, and more. Plus, we offer free design consults to help you with your next project. Scan or visit vontobels.com today to book your free consultation. Von Tobel, building better together. Good evening, everybody. Thank you for joining us, and welcome to Game Night in the Region, built by Von Tobel on the Region Sports Network, streaming worldwide on the Internet at Facebook.com slash Region Sports, RSN YouTube, regionsports.com, and IHSAATV.com. Tonight's video is presented by American Community Bank. We come to you tonight from the burial grounds on the campus of Lake Central High School as Von Tobel presents the Crown Point Bulldogs taking on the Lake Central Indians. Michael Brenner here on site for the play-by-play. -play. And joining me with the color analysis is Doug Ashenbaugh and Rick Novak. Gentlemen, it is great to be back with you for another week of high school football. Yeah, it sure it is. I mean, it's a perfect night for football, too, as well, man. It's nice and cool. It's no rain. The rain's gone, man. It's, it's, it's a perfect night. Nothing much more to add there. It is a great <laughs> night. Not too hot. A couple, pa past few weeks have been uh, kind of scorchers. So. A little un, uh, unseasonably warm here, I would say, in the uh, start of the high school football season. But this is really starting to feel like a good mid-season type of game. you got teams rounding out into week four of the high school football season. you got Lake Central coming off a really close game last week against the Portage Indians. I mean, they just held on to that last possible moment, getting a one-point victory against uh, their – same name team, I guess, uh, from, from Portage, Indiana. But, yeah, it was a tough battle. And they had to do it in a way that uh, I got to talk to a couple of players pregame uh, down on the field. And they said, you know what, because our running game wasn't there, Xavier Williams not in the lineup today. He won't be in the lineup again tonight either. And they kind of had to become a little di different dimensional in terms of throwing the game. Yeah, they did. And Xavier Williams, like you talked about, he's been their guy the past couple of years. And when you don't have your guy, it's about – the coaching staff, the team, coming up with a different way to get things done on offense on the fly, and they got that done. And also for LC, they haven't had a time when they've really had to come back like that the past couple of years, and uh, they got that done. So for Coach Good, when you're trying to build a program, taking it to the next level, uh, you got to like seeing that from your team. Yeah, and you talk about the Doomland Conference too as well, right? Obviously, you get one point win, you get a ten point. However you can take it right. in that conference, man, you take it. But, yeah, you know, you're exactly right. It's how do you adjust and proceed? And that's when the underclassmen, you know, they've been working their butts off too as well all season or all preseason long. And when, you know, it's time for them to get called up and you sneak out a one-point victory, you're going home happy still regardless. Yeah, 100%. I mean, this is something that, you know, talking with preseason for Lake Central, a lot of the, of the players say, we just want to be that relevant team again. We don't want to be considered that bye week for a lot of games in the conference. We want to be a relevant team. And, you know, you get that one-point win. It doesn't matter if 1, 10, 50, doesn't matter. Like Crown Point's doing, it feels like, on a, on a regular basis. Yeah. Wins are wins. And in a conference that kind of feels like it has three tiers to it, you have your top-tier teams, and then you have your middle tier, and then maybe a bottom tier as well. Lake Central feels like it may be kind of maybe closer to the top of that middle tier i don't know how you guys feel about that no i think that's fair i think that's a fair overall uh analysis of the conference and of lc's place in the conference and they're trying to take that next step up i mean they are i think either them or crown point are the biggest school in the conference so yeah. they do have an enrollment advantage against a lot of the competition so they want to get to that next level and you know coach good has been here a couple years now and he's trying to turn that corner and um you know, winning the games where you don't even play the best, that's a big thing about being a good program because that's how good programs win. They don't always play the best, but they find ways to get things done. Yeah, absolutely right. You talk about numbers here. God, they started running out of the tunnel. They were on the sideline. They were still running out of the tunnel back over here. So, yeah, you talk about size-wise, and you're, you have that ability to be able to see a lot of kids. A lot of kids are coming out. And, again, you know, you talk about the past couple of years to where they're at now. You know they are taking those right steps. They are starting to turn that corner. And, um, you know, unfortunately, Xavier Williams going out, you know, last week, um, the run game has helped him out tremendously. Yeah. And that's the biggest thing, you know. Lake Central did love to pass the past couple of years. Now they're starting to find the, that run game. And when you can control the clock, pound the ball, you know, that's when you start seeing some success. And, and that's what we're seeing from Lake Central this year so far. All right, we're going to step aside for just a moment. On the other side of the break, we will talk about those Crown Point Bulldogs that have absolutely been rolling for the first three weeks of the season. You're watching Game 9 of the Region Sports Network, built by Von Tobel, the only game in town. 
Centrally located in downtown Indianapolis, the Hampton Inn is just steps away from Banker's Life Fieldhouse. Situated at 105 South Meridian Street, shopping, restaurants, entertainment, and many Indianapolis attractions are in near proximity. Hampton Inn has much to offer, including a hot breakfast, high-speed internet access in every room, as well as a gym fitness center. For reservations, the number is 317-261-1200. The website is hamptoninn3.hilton.com. Hampton Inn, Indianapolis, downtown. Are you a builder, remodeler, or homeowner? If so, you need quality materials at the right price. Whether you're just getting started or a seasoned pro, Von Tobel's friendly and knowledgeable staff can help. And since we're 100% employee-owned, every time you come in, you're dealing with an owner. We have a great selection for kitchen, bath, flooring, decking, and more. Plus, we offer free design consults to help you with your next project. Scan or visit VonTobel's.com today to book your free consultation. Von Tobel, building better Welcome back as Von Tobel presents Game Night in the Region right here on the Region Sports Network. Von Tobel, build better together. All right, let's talk about those Crown Point Bulldogs. We previewed Lake Central a little bit, the Crown Point Bulldogs. Other than just pure domination, there's not much more to say. I mean, they are just winning at almost every facet of the game, offense and defensive, even in special teams. They sure are. I mean, you, you talk about oh, Noah Ehrlich right now. He's got 598 yards. Six touchdowns, only two interceptions of that. And then you flip it over to the run game. Yeah. Ellison. I mean, 369 yards and nine touchdowns on the year. I mean, when you've got a passing game plus a run game on that, I, I, what more can you say? What more could you want from your offense? Yeah, last week against Maryville, watching that game, uh, against a Maryville defensive line that's pretty good, has D1 players on it. Their offensive line and their running game got whatever they wanted, and they were gashing them hard. And they really just pushed those guys around all night long. That was the most impressive. I know they everyone's talking about Ehrlich in the passing game, but, but their running game last week was elite. Well, and the defense as well, as we said, keeping, you know, Maryville really relatively, except for those final seconds of the game, off the board. And that's a very good, uh, you know, Maryville squad offensively as well. And we're going to get you tuned in here for our national anthem, brought to you by the Lake Central Band. Great rendition of the National Anthem brought to you by the Lake Central Band. And uh, when we're talking about that Crown Point team, obviously, you know, offensively, they've been lighting it up. Defensively, they've been able to have their way with offenses, and it really starts with having that 5-3-3, which is really, you know, I've seen in the last couple of weeks, is really seeming to give some other teams fits in terms of how they're going to use that 5-3-5. Five, three, five. Uh, I or agree. Three, five, three, excuse me. Yeah, yeah, I agree. And, I mean, obviously it's led by Will Clark, <laughs> at middle linebacker. I, I mean, you know, he's, he's 6'4", 240. He's got 19 tackles, 18 assists, you know, on the year. And, uh, I mean, you talk about a leader on that defense. Uh, that's where all the guys kind of look up. And, I mean, it starts when you when you have that style of defense too as well. you got to have some athletic linebackers. And Will Clark is leading the way with that. Yeah, when you play that 3-3 kind of stack defense, it gives you a lot of versatility to yeah. be able to slant your defensive lines, bring linebacker safeties from different angles, different blitzes. Their defensive coordinator, Zach Wells, was uh, head coach in Maryville. He's very well known in the region, obviously. He's a very good coach, and uh, he does a great job with those guys. And they've been dominant, like we said, on offense, on defense, special teams, all three phases of the game. Um, they look to be, you know, what everyone thought they'd be in the preseason. I've met a lot of really good minds in terms of different various sports 
in my time working here for Regent Sports Network. Zach, Mel Zach Wells might be one of the best football minds I have ever come across in terms of his discussions when he was at Maryville I actually was doing my student teaching at Maryville as well and I got to listen to him over the course of you know Mondays you know talking about what's going to happen over the course of the week and stuff like that it was it was a lot of fun getting to listen to him talk and and stuff like that so it's uh, always a privilege to get to hear these coaches talk about, yeah. about various things yeah. I, I, I wanted to ask Coach Bazia before the game. I don't know if you guys didn't see on uh, their social media page. There was Coach Bazia had some dance moves. <laughs> I got to see that video. Uh, yeah, right? I was going to say I missed this. I mean, when you beat Maryville, it's got some uh, brings some extra little like emphasis to the to the mm -hmm. locker room post game. I would think. Oh yeah, like you see in Dabo Sweeney afterwards. <laughs> so was that was that Coach Buzz down in there or what? It looked like it was Coach, <laughs> it was Coach Buzz. So Lake Central will defer. So we will see the Crown Point offense to start things up here. It's time for today's starting lineup, sponsored by Gladish Law Group. They're here to help the Gladish Law Group. So starting up for the Crown Point Bulldogs today on offense will be the quarterback, Noah Ehrlich. We've talked about him, the junior, having a really good season, almost 600 yards, six touchdowns, does have two interceptions. Uh, but we've really watched over these last number of years. It feels like he's been around the region for about 20 years now. <laughs> I mean, a long-term like Tom Brady type in the region. But he's only a junior, so uh, we're still going to get to see the rest of this season and one more from the youngster. And we also got Larry Ellis in the starting runner back. Your receivers, Cam Sorcy, Landon Delich, Nick Soley, and then the tight end, Seamus Molaski. And then the five best friends of those guys are your offensive line. You got Elia Paviadakis, Jeff Machete, Nathan Gregory, Austin Rivera, and Paul Clark from left tackle to right tackle. And then starting defense for Lake Central, Javon Williams, Tyrone Sussner, and Christian Gavin, you're off your uh, starting line for the defense. And then your linebacker core, Chris Gavin, Jeffrey Lucas, Tyler Besich, and Matt Penman. And then in your backfield, you Ryder Fernandez, Mylon Davis, and Marianne Brooks, and Michael League. You're just about ready to start things up here from Lake Central High School. Your game night forecast brought to you by our friends at Economy Electric Heating and Cooling. Your game night forecast, it is a very comfortable 65 degrees, cloudy skies, a perfect night for football and one of the one of the better rivalries here around the region. Lake Central in blue, Crown Point in red, Lake Central student section in red, white, and blue. Couldn't really see what Crown Point student section. I know they were going at it back and forth on social media this week. Yeah, you get them together, man. They uh, It's fun to watch those student it's, sections go at it for these some, two schools. It's some fun rivalries, <laughs> and we are ready to go here for week four as the kick is underway, and it'll be a long kick from Owen Denny into the backfield for a touchback. Now, you know, kickers don't get that much credit. That That is phenomenal. I mean, he almost kicked it out of the back of the end zone there, and they're starting, you know, on the 20-yard line. When you talk about field position, you got a kicker that's basically going to give your defense and make the offense go 80 yards. That's the phenomenal. It's not too shabby, and you know that's something that uh, Coach Good is ready to have at his disposal at any moment. His younger brother, Michael Denny, at the middle school level, ready to come back up next year. So... Crown Point will take over on offense, and we will see Lake Central's defense. This will be a good early test to see where Lake Central's at in terms of their defense. A really good matchup here against them today. So Ehrlich in the shotgun, gets the snap, throws to his right immediately. Pass is caught by Soley out to the right side, and we got laundry all over the field on the first play of the game. Just running the trips, and Crown Point does love that too as well. Let's get their athletes the ball quick. Let them make their moves out there. Unfortunately, we got a penalty. Looks like possibly either holding, pushing the back. I'm not exactly sure. But um, you know, Crown Point's going to do that a lot. There's a lot of quick slants, wide receiver screens, little bubble passes, and you know they do. They like to do out of trips too, as well. You're going to take them safeties that are on the outside deep, that inside slot receiver, come back for a quick pass, and let them at the And this is this is also a new one for me. I haven't been in a game yet this year where the official actually gets to have like a loud. Right. I, I don't think I've ever seen that in high school before. Actually, I mean the atmosphere is great though. It honestly, is, it I mean, is. It's an awesome atmosphere going on right now. I've seen it at Maryville, but trust me, a live microphone is the last thing. Uh, that looks like Larry Babcock down there. That's the last thing that man needs. <laughs> Ellison out to the right side, tackled for. Uh, maybe a gain of two on the play, so it'll be third down, or uh, they had to repeat the first down, so it'll be second down and about 16 or so, maybe 18. Yeah, nice job by the LC defense there. 
plugging it up to start and then pursuing when he tried to bounce it outside. Glad you're with us on another night of high school football. Yeah, Doug, you talked about this atmosphere here. I mean, there have been quite a few tickets sold, a few uh, extra people in the crowd tonight. Middle school night for Lake Central. So you got three middle schools coming together here. Ehrlich looking to pass down the field. He's got a guy open, and the catch is by Delich out near midfield. Landon Delich, the 200-pound senior, with his 10th catch of the season. Well, there you go. He's 6'4", and you saw every bit of it right there. The DB had actually good coverage on him, but it was a great throw by Ehrlich, and he put it right to him where he could get it in the DB couldn't. Yeah, and I'm shocked to see Lake Central come out with man coverage. I would think with, you know, how tall the receivers are, you don't want a one-on-one -on -one jump ball that's coming up there. I'm, you know, drop those safeties, get them back. Don't let those big plays over the top happen. Well, they did use play action. Maybe they got those safeties yeah. to run up a little bit. Handoff is to Ellison, and they get the stop for a loss of one. By the way, the kickoff we had earlier was brought to you by Quintel Incorporated, specializing in the reconditioning, repair, and remanufacturing of heat exchangers. All kickoffs today are brought to you by Quintel Incorporated. Another nice job by the LC defense there, plugging up the inside run. The Crown Point tried to go counter, pull the tackle and the guard, but the LC defense was up to the task there. Yeah, they're making some nice plays on the run, and it looks like LC's coming out saying, hey, we're going to pressure Noah, we're going to stop your run game. I know your pass game is great, but try to beat us with that. Looking to throw out to the right again, to the right side, breaking a couple of tackles, but then finally take it down across midfield. Looked like solely in on the tackle, or in on the catch again. Yeah, to Doug's point earlier, Crown Point likes those little fast outside screens, a little different one than they originally ran on the first play. Uh, good blocking out front to gain a nice couple of little yards, four or five yards there. Third down and six coming up here. Lee getting on the tackle for Lake Central on that play. So third down and six as the clock continues to run. 9.37 left to go in this opening quarter. Got trips to the right side, one in motion. There's the snap. Ellison runs to the right, doesn't find a hole, and gets tackled. He gets a yard on the play, but fourth down coming up for the Bulldogs. Big stop there by the linebacker. I mean, what they brought is that slot receiver coming back in motion. They ran almost like a counter trade back over to him, but the linebackers is, is the keys reading the guards. And, man, he did an incredible job. He was able to shed that lead block and make that stop because at first I thought there was going to be a big hole there and was, out of nowhere. There oh, was a hole. Yeah, there was. Man, he closed on that thing very well. Ehrlich still out there on offense. You got two wide receivers to the right, one to the near side. That's Delich. I back think he's going to gonna kick it. Yeah. He is going to punt it. Nobody back for Lake Central, and this one's going to touch and take a nice bounce, and now a nice roll for the Bulldogs as it lands at about the six-yard line, and that's where it's going to be down. So Lake Central not with the best starting field position to start a game, but to keep – Crown Point off the board on the yeah. first possession is a is kind of a win if, if you're Lake Central. Absolutely a win. Uh, I, I mean, that's exactly what you want. Yeah, they gave up a couple first downs, a big play, but it's that bend, don't break mentality, and they got off the field. They're going to have to stop the run to win this game, and they did give up the big pass, but they held that uh, Crown Point running game there to you know four or five yards on four carries, so really up to the test there. Now I'm sure Coach Bazia is going to make some adjustments here to their running game, and it's going to be up to Coach Good to keep his defense up to task with his own counter adjustments. Yeah, you got two veteran coaches here as well, so it's interesting to see the chess match that will take place here later. We'll give you the starting lineup here in just a moment for Lake Central. Brought to you by Gladish Law Group. Get Gladish. First catch out to the near side. Catch is made. And again, you that know, you is got, Grenada hot stream in on the first catch of the game. Yeah, and, and it's quick passes, right? Yeah, obviously, your, your starting tailback went down. He's not in the game right now. Build some confidence in your quarterback. Get some nice quick throws. Those quick throws that are going to open up that run game is what they're probably coming out thinking, hey, let's take these quick passes. Let's get these linebackers moving. Let's open up our run game. So Chase Kwiatkowski in at quarterback for Lake Central. Handoff for the run is Brooks, Amarion Brooks, your starting running back. So the starting lineup for Lake Central's offense brought to you by Gladish Law Group. They're here to help. Action's not words. You got Chase Kwiatkowski in at quarterback. Amarion Brooks, the starting tailback. Your receivers, LJ Richardson, James Graham the third, Owen Denny, and then Mason Lopez as well. 
Your starting line will give you in just a moment. Kukowski looking to throw out to his left. He's got a receiver near the sideline, and it's incomplete. So it'll be fourth down. Your starting line today, James Johnson, Andy Allegria, Brogman Damron, Matthew Kafka, and then Jonathan Ross. By the way, the left tackle, I call him Little Jimmy. 6'4", 260 pounds there. I call him Little Jimmy. We talked pregame about the different types of blitzes you can bring. Number 39 from Crown Point, Trevor Gibbs got home free. Rushed the throw from Kukowski. The, the receiver was open there. He had some separation, and the pressure made a quick throw from Kukowski, and he couldn't get it there. The punt was by Trevor Baldwin for Lake Central. So Trevor Baldwin, your punter today, and now the Crown Point Bulldogs will take over offensively again for their second possession, and they'll get pretty good field position yeah. to start things up. Yeah, that's the last thing you want right now is to give Crown Point, obviously, um, the ball in their territory right now. They're going to come out firing. I mean, this is where Buzz is probably going to look and say, hey, let's go out and make a statement. Let's maybe, you know, it's a deep one, one-on-one -on -one jump ball. They're going to do something. They're going to go for the end zone is what I have a feeling for. Crown Point started at their own 20, got the ball to the 50, punted at to LC's inside the 10, and LC had to punch to the 50. So Crown Point is winning the battle of field position yeah, to start. Absolutely. Wildcat. We've seen this a few times here for as Ellison takes it. He takes the direct snap, and he gets tackled for a loss of one immediately. Number 48 in there on the tackle, Trist Christian Gavin. Christian. Yeah, he just read that probably. He blew right past the offensive line and was able to stop him for a one-yard loss. I mean, that's just a great heads-up play, knowing in their wildcat, know it's going to be a run and getting back there. I think he was the backside DN. Sometimes you leave that guy unblocked yeah. because you think you can outrun him, but he made a great play just tracking him down. Four wide receivers, three to the near side here, one to the top of your screen. Ehrlich looking to his left. Pass Ooh. is going to be... Just incomplete. It was almost picked off. Yeah, it was Jeffrey Lucas with the tip, actually, the uh, the linebacker there. I mean, that's just great heads up, you know, getting back in your zone, dropping back, and, and getting your hand on the ball. <laughs> I well, mean, it's tip drill. <laughs> he was reading Ehrlich's eyes all the way there, just sitting in the window. Ehrlich didn't even see him, and, man, he probably wishes he had that one back because that <laughs> should have been an interception. Yeah. It certainly looked like it was going to be, that's for sure. It looked like Matt Penman was the one who almost came up with that one. Ehrlich looking to step up again, gets pressure, runs out of it, running to his right, throws ahead, passes complete, he finds Delich out across the 25. Ooh, he's very lucky that they might count that as a complete pass because did he touch the ground to fully complete the process of the catch would have been the question. He got rolled up yeah. there on that tackle, but he's, oh, I'm glad he's hopping off there. Yeah, yeah, he's Good hobbling off ball. right now. I mean, you talk about, though, you know, Noah, you know, yeah, he's a great passer. Yeah, he's got great vision, but he's got legs. He's able to be able to, you know, move the pocket, scramble, get out of tackles, and make a field. I mean, keeping his eyes downfield and, and making that throw. I mean, great job to Delich, too, as well, coming back to your quarterback by all means. But, uh, you know, Noah Erg's got a lot, a lot of weapons in his arsenal. No, I was going to say the same thing. I think that's maybe his most underrated aspect is yeah. that ability because I've seen it for the past couple of years when he was at Hobart and now at Crown Point. He's always kind of had that escapability, the ability to keep his eyes downfield and make plays happen. Almost like Aaron Rodgers. I'm not saying he's to that <laughs> level or anything, but it is reminiscent of that yeah. style. That would be quite the uh, comparison here. No, I'm not going <laughs> to compare any high school kid to them. but <laughs> Handoff is to Ellison, trying to get some room on that right side. Finds nothing to do. Gets a swarm of Lake Central defenders. Yeah, exactly. Lake Central's doing a great job with this this run defense. I, I mean, they're they're plugging gaps. You know, they're firing to the ball. Um, this is exactly what you need. You got to stop that run game. You know, like we were talking about just a second ago. You got to stop the run game. And right now, they're being successful with that. Coming into the game, 46 rushes, 369 yards for Ellison, nine touchdowns. Coming in here, especially because you know Ehrlich's had great numbers this year. But last week against Maryville, they leaned on the running game. Yeah. I think. That's what they're going to lean on when, against the better teams. You know, you got to have the pass, but that's why LC needs to stop that. Looking to go toward the end zone. Pass is too long. On the end zone. 83 was the intended Cam target. Cam Sorcy. Cam Sorcy 
He's got four catches, just shy of 60 yards coming into this particular game here. Michael's Pizza has been a favorite spot since 1979. Enjoy pizza, sandwiches, and more. Dine in or carry out. Lingle serves Northwest Indiana from three locations, Highland, Cherryville, and Crown Point. Order online at linglespizza.com. Lingle's Pizza, the official pizza of the, of the region sports network. A little quick huddle here. Trying to get the running game going a little bit more here. Trying to push, and it will be fourth down. They get a couple of yards inside the 20 here. Yeah, I, I like that play, though, because now you made it fourth and short. We know they're going down forward on fourth down in this. You know, get yourself three, four more yards where now you can open up a little quick bubble screen, a quick slant, something that's going to be much easier and manageable for your offense. That was a great run by Ellison because yeah. LC had him dead to rights in the yeah, backfield for a, no gain or a loss even, and he made something out of nothing to make this fourth and manageable here. Under five minutes to go here in the opening quarter tonight. Man, what a big stop right here for LC if they can get it, huh? We do have a, looks like a timeout going to be taken by Coach Good as he runs out uh, really to the center of the field at this point right now. He wants to talk to his guys right there. Yeah, he does. We're going to step aside for just a moment. You're watching Game Night of the Region Sports Network, the only game in town. Are you a builder, remodeler, or homeowner? If so, you need quality materials at the right price. Whether you're just getting started or a seasoned pro, Von Tobel's friendly and knowledgeable staff can help. And since we're 100% employee-owned, every time you come in, you're dealing with an owner. We have a great selection for kitchen, bath, flooring, decking, and more. Plus, we offer free design consults to help you with your next project. Scan or visit VonTobel's.com today to book your free consultation. Von Tobel, building better together. Welcome back to game night here on the Region Sports Network. Michael Brander here along with Doug Ashenball, Rick Novak. Happy to have you with us on a Friday night. I really, think we got packed stands here at Lake Central tonight. Yeah, I mean, even they're standing over here. I don't, there's not much seating room, honestly, on the Lake Central side right now. They're standing up over there against the glass in the end zone over there, which, by the way, that is such a cool little section of the field right there. Oh, yeah. I mean, that's all. That's like a college atmosphere kind of style sitting right over there. So we'll see what that happens on fourth down here. Ehrlich looks to go to the right. Pass Ooh. is caught, and it is broken up. Well, still on his feet, Jacob Jones. And he's going to be taken out of bounds right in front of the Crown Point bench. What a big stop for Lake Central. I mean, just, you know, just said it just a second ago, but when you talk about those quick bubble screens and those quick wide receiver screens, LC's been all over it. Okay, so, i got to ask you. I mean, obviously the odds on favor at Crown Point in this game with the way they've been playing – Momentum got to be building a little bit on that Lake Central sideline. Confidence has got to be boosting a little bit. You know, you've made some great stops so far. Get this turnover here. Well, true. Their defense has been up to task so far, but their offense needs to get something going because their first possession, three and out, they had nothing. So I think right now if they can move the ball on offense, they don't need to score right now, but they at least need to maybe flip the field. Flip at least the field, yeah. And <laughs> let their defense keep them in this game. And we're going to have a flag here before the snap even takes place, uh, and it's going to be a start. false start. Yeah, that's not <laughs> the way you want to draw it up. Yeah, they didn't make much positive yardage on their first possession of the game. So looking to maybe change that a little bit, and this is not the direction you want to be going if you're Lake Central, but you know that, that momentum you or that confidence you build on the defensive end might start to trickle over here. We'll just wait for that to happen. The defense, by the way, for the Crown Point Bulldogs on the defensive line. you got Nate Kalk, Mark Gonzalez, Seamus Molaski here as the handoff goes to Amarion Brooks, and he is tackled immediately by this plethora of Crown Point defense. you got Will Clark, Drew Kroll, Trevor Gibbs, Tom Fanton, Jacob Jones, all the linebacker position, and then in the backfield, Jalen Kelly, Griffin, Van Tischelt, and Landon Delich. Yeah, Crown Point brought a blitz there at the last minute, went to cover zero behind it, uh, a run blitz basically. They called LC's bluff there. So I think LC, they need to start, you know, maybe doing some check with me at the line because this Crown Point defense, like we said pregame, they like to move around, bring a lot of different blitzes, a lot of different areas, maybe try to do a hard count, see where they're coming, check to something from the sidelines and see if you can get a big play. Yeah, I like that call. They get a hard count. See if you can get him back. Second and 17. Ball is fumbled on the exchange. Quarterback to running back, and we'll see who comes up with it with the pile. Looks like it's going to be Lake Central that fell on top of it. Clock yeah. continues to move here. 3.45 to go in the opening quarter. 
you know, like Rick was just talking about, this is not a good start. You wanted to try to flip the field. If you couldn't score, right, flip the field. And right now they're going backwards. I think they lost about eight yards in two plays now. And, well, now, and now you're kind of forced to pass. Yeah. Unless you just wave the white flag and run. But it, it's tough. I mean, they've had a, a bad start, a great start defensively, probably the worst start they could offensively. Well, and this is – Something that links it, you know, I was talking to the players before the game, and they're saying, you know, our pass game, we, got, we we had no choice but to get better. So we'll see what Kwiatkowski can do here. Gets out of the pressure, stands up, and gets tackled out across the 15. He got out of the initial pressure and then ran into a whole different set of pressures. Yeah, yeah the that's, coverage. I'm, so, I'm sorry. Go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, no, the yeah. coverage behind, he got out of, they brought pressure, but the coverage behind, it was perfect. And even though he evaded it to begin with, there was nothing downfield for him to do. He really needed to probably just tuck it and run to begin with. Yeah, absolutely. That's exactly what I was going to say. That, that that was right there was the, the defensive backs. That was the, a coverage. That's the reason why they were able to stop him. But you're right. He should have just kind of took off and tried to gain a little bit of yardage. Trevor Baldwin back to kick with 2.41 left to go in this opening quarter. Trying to flip the field a little bit. It's a high kick. We'll take it at about the 45-yard line, or about the 44 is where the fair catch is going to be called by Jacob Jones. So we'll see Crump Point take over yet again. And we'd like to remind everyone that video of tonight's game is presented by American Community Bank with locations in Cherryville, Crown Point, Dyer, Hammond, and Munster. American Community Bank is Northwest Indiana's local neighborhood bank. Visit acbanker.com to find out more. you got to think that LC defense has played very well so far, but they've been out there quite a bit. Yes. Yeah. You know, even though Crown Point hasn't put the ball in the end zone, they have gotten some first downs. They have gotten some chunk plays. So is, if that starts wearing them down a bit, then you're going to see Crown Point probably start to gash them a little bit, I think. Starting at the 44, Ellison trying to run ahead, getting a couple of yards here. One of his better runs getting in, not, I mean, not much to do, but still getting some positive yardage. Yeah, I mean, LC is is defensively, I mean, we can't talk about it enough right now, but uh, obviously they're the ones keeping him in the game with the offense is struggling. Is You keep shutting down this run, though, Crown Point's going to struggle. Especially with Delich kind of hobbled. Yeah. He's back in the game now, but you got to wonder, is he 100%? Yeah, right. Because he got rolled up pretty nasty there. Um, so we'll see. They've got four wide receivers, two to the near side, two to the far side. Ehrlich looking to throw, has pressure, checks it down, passes incomplete. So doing again, the defense stepping up. That defensive line again, by the way, then this is a starting lineup brought to you by Gladys Law Group. Jamon Williams, Tyrone Sussner, and Christian Gavin, really those first kind of initial guys there on the defensive line. And it was a great play by Jamon Williams. I mean, he, he sniffed that screen out, and he stayed. And he was right behind that offensive lineman in front of Ellison. And uh, ultimately, obviously, dropped into a drop pass. But even if catching it, Williams was right there. He was, he was ready for that screen. And just like that, we're back to third down for the Bulldogs. Ehrlich looks to step up, looks to throw, moves to his right, down the field. He's got a man open, and the pass is caught and into the end zone. Bulldog touchdown, Nick Sorley. Oh, man. I mean... The coverage to begin with was perfect. There was nothing there, and then Soli just kept running, and yeah. nobody ran with him, and Ehrlich, to his credit, stayed composed, kept his eyes downfield, and just hit him. I saw it from here, and I put threw my hands up, and <laughs> yeah, but not much. It, it looked easy, but the first part of the play was hard. Yeah, and the offensive line did a great job. I mean, yeah, there was no pressure. Yeah. I mean, the offensive line stood tough in there, and, and you know, Noah had a lot of time to make that throw, and obviously Soli to keep running down the field. And we've got a whistle. I don't know if we've ever if we actually snapped the ball. Yeah, they uh, they shifted around. It looks okay. like an LC jumped into the neutral. Well, way past the neutral zone. Well, and it was, I, I started getting thrown off because I looked down there. That was not Oliver Brewer on to attempt the <laughs> kick. It was Larry Ellison to attempt the kick. It looks like the holder was going to be Noah Ehrlich, like usual. Carson Granger. Defense. After this goal, we play the try. I'm not used to this, having to stop so we can hear what the other... <laughs> yeah. It's nice, though. It, I, is, it is nice. And that's what a back-breaking play for the LC defense. Because, yeah. really, like I said, you got him in third down. The coverage to begin the play was perfect. They, But Ehrlich keeping his eyes downfield, solely keeping running, you know, not stopping his route for anything. Just great play. Now it looks like we're going to go for a two-point conversion and into the end zone for the two points. 
is Ellison. And just like that, 8 nothing. your score in favor of the Crown Point Bulldogs. We'll step aside. You're watching Game Night, built by Von Tobel on the Region Sports Network, the only game in town. Are you a builder, remodeler, or homeowner? If so, you need quality materials at the right price. Whether you're just getting started or a seasoned pro, Von Tobel's friendly and knowledgeable staff can help. And since we're 100% employee-owned, every time you come in, you're dealing with an owner. We have a great selection for kitchen, bath, flooring, decking, and more. Plus, we offer free design consults to help you with your next project. Scan or visit VonTobel's.com today to book your free consultation. Von Tobel, building better together. Some see a student athlete working on a shot. We see a powerful lesson in persistence. Some see a student preparing for success on an exam. We see a student athlete preparing for success in life. Proud to keep education in front of athletics since 1903. You're watching RSN Game Night presented by Von Tobel. Von Tobel, your local building material supplier and design center. Visit vontobel.com to find out more. This is a Quintel kickoff, and this kickoff presented by Quintel Incorporated. LC on the return out to almost the 30 there, and we got some extracurriculars taking place afterwards. So a couple of shoves going on. The official is going to go in there, and everyone's going to just head back to their Respective sidelines, Quintel Incorporated handling jobs of all sizes throughout the country since 1994. One guy that's ready to go, though, Jacob Jones. He's right out there near the 40 <laughs> marker. Yeah, he's ready. He's ready. <laughs> that's the guy that's over here that you're, that you're chasing that just ran in full sprinted 60 yards. So he stayed on his side of the field and said, uh -uh, I'm ready, Coach. I got it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure Coach Bazia is. Yeah, I get you. You're good. Yeah. So Lake Central takes over again on offense. Their third time. On the O side, handoff is to Brooks. Tries to find a little running room and is taken down at about the 30-yard line here as that wind continues to whip here into the press box. Lake Central's got to get something going on offense. I, I, I mean, after that big play especially, you got to try to get some kind of momentum back. But, you know, these simple just little kind of counter plays, dive plays are not working. you got to get something going. Well, I, what I was going to say is Crown Point has seven guys in the box and two safeties very close. Yeah. And they got two guys, the corners, up in press coverage. Maybe you try to hit something deep here, try to loosen them up, and then maybe after that you can get your running game going. They do have two wide receivers, one to each side. The throw to the left Ooh. side. Pass is picked off. Picked off. And it's Jalen Kelly, his second interception of the season. Yeah, that was great coverage, just blanketing the receiver, playing the ball. And it was a nice catch because he, he kind of caught it almost behind him a little yeah. bit, and he was able to control it through the ground. He had a lineman from LC come barreling down on him, too, to make a tackle. So great play by him and big momentum swing here for Crown LC. They came out like we're talking about with some passion, some fire on defense, but Crown Point's, you know, they've really kind of turned the, the book right now. Yeah, and, and, and I mean, you talk about that defense that just came off the field, and, and then in two plays, they're like, oh, we got to go back out there yeah. again. I mean, that's a very big swing. Two wide receivers to that far side. Here's the fake pitch out to Ellison. Throw across. Pass is just out of the reach. Looked like Jacob Jones out on the far side of the field. He was ready on the near side before, and this time, just a little bit out of the reach of his hands. And this is just where that's the continual development of Noah Ehrlich just trying to get on that timing rhythm. Well, it was it was a great play from the Crown Point coaching staff because Jones is a wide receiver. They had him kind of as an H-back, and they motioned him to a wing and then ran that play action, had him completely wide open. And uh, as a defense, you kind of kind of got to notice that when you got a guy maybe out of position where he normally is at, maybe there's going to be a kind of a special play coming. So now the wide receiver is on the near side of the field. Ellison has room to run out across the 35, taken down at about the 32-yard line. So this should be good for a first down. They are going to move the chain, so it's a Bulldog first down. And that's what that big play on offense opens up now. Now they're worried about over the top. They're, you know, they left the guy wide open over there. Now they're playing pass. 
Here comes Ellison. And also, uh, great call. And they also, like to your point, I mean, they have to be so tired at this point. They yeah. played so much in this first quarter so far. They've been out there for, I mean, how long has Crown Point had the ball? I mean, I don't have the official ten, time, but ten at ten the, minutes. I mean, it's, it feels it's like been a, yeah, it's been a long. I think it's been seven possessions so far yeah. in the first quarter between the two, which is which is a lot. Ehrlich rolling to his right, pass is caught on the far sideline. It's Delich. Again, gets out across the 20, out across the 15, and the marker is going to be about the 14-yard line. Delich is having himself in quite a game today. Soli gets the first touchdown for himself of the season. He came in having 194 yards. According to the stats that we received, no touchdowns, though, on the season. So he was doing a lot of that dirty work but never found the end zone until that play. Well, I think Delich just showed you that he's fine after yeah. that hit earlier. Yeah. I mean, he's so smooth, and he looked perfectly fine right there. Fake handoff again. Ehrlich looking to run. Runs to the outside. Running ahead. And he is going to be in for the touchdown. And I, that's just a great play, right? Obviously, you, you've been feeding Ell, uh, Ellison all night. And it's just a simple read. Read what that DN's doing. He crashes down. You're yanking and going outside. I, I, crown points most dangerous is when Noah Ehrlich's feet are moving. Rather than the pass game or the run game, that's when crown points the most dangerous. Oliver Brewer on to attempt the extra point. It's 9 of 10 on the season. The long snapper Carson Granger, the holder, is Noah Ehrlich. Snap kick. It is up and it is good. So just like that, it'll be a 15-0 lead for the Bulldogs. You're watching game night. Built by Von Tobel on the Region Sports Network, the only game in town. Quintel Incorporated is a family-owned and operated company located in Northwest Indiana that specializes in the reconditioning, repair, and remanufacturing of heat exchangers. Since 1994, Quintel has been handling jobs of all sizes throughout the country. Equipped with the most modern technology and advanced tools, Quintel provides top-notch service. When you trust Quintel for all your needs, you'll get peace of mind and a finished job that exceeds your expectations. For more info about Quintel and the services they provide, visit quintel-inc.com. American Community Bank is a local bank serving the Northwest Indiana area exclusively for over a century. A true community bank that is proud to remain a faithful local institution dedicated to being your financial partner throughout life. With branches in Cherville, Crown Point, Dyer, Hammond, and Munster, American Community Bank is a full-service bank serving clients with personal and business banking needs. Visit acbanker.com to find out more about American Community Bank. Welcome back to game night here on the Region Sports Network, brought to you by Von Tobel. This is a Quintel kickoff, brought to you by Quintel Incorporated, specializing in the reconditioning, repair, and remanufacturing of heat exchangers. Out to return and tackled immediately out across the 15 for Lake Central is Amarion Brooks. Lake Central just trying to get some kind of positivity going here as we enter the second quarter of action I got to give a, I got to point something out somebody on the Crown Point return team just blew somebody yeah. up from the LC <laughs> or, excuse me the Crown Point coverage team just blew somebody up from the LC return team one of the returners from LC tried to make a block and just got almost backflipped by, yeah. by the kid it was uh, pretty impressive I'm not I didn't catch a number unfortunately can't give a shout out but I did have to point that out yeah there was a lot of red down there versus blue when he was returning It's confidence builder. You know, you gotta make the, you gotta just stand a little bit firmer for the tackles and try to take it a little, absorb it a little bit better. Kwiatkowski keeps, runs ahead, has some room to run, and gets close to the first down. He's out across the 25, and they're actually gonna mark it uh, maybe right at the marker. So it is a run of 10 yards. The biggest play of the game so far for Lake Central comes on the legs of Chase Kwiatkowski. Yeah, I like the call there from the LC offensive coordinator because they've been getting stuffed trying to go inside. They get. Kwiatkowski going around on the read option, hits the alley for a 10-yard gain the first down. Yeah, you called it earlier, Rick. You said, you got to try getting outside. Get out of the box, and, and they were successful. So on the near hash, handoff is to Brooks. He gets stopped immediately. There is some laundry on the field while we await for that. Mayor Pete Land and the Crown Point Pace Department are proud to support Crown Point Bulldog football and say, Go Bulldogs! Crown Point remains dedicated to preserving history, celebrating everyday life, providing the best in-city services, and encouraging smart growth. Mayor Land and the Pace team invite everyone to Bulldog Park for Oktoberfest on October 6th and 7th. Holding. 
Offense, 10 yards from the previous spot, remains first down. Uh, that, <laughs> that, that hurts you. Join yeah. them for German music and fair. More information, contact Pace Department at 219-661-2271. Sorry, Doug. No, no, you're, you're good. I mean, that hurts. You're just right now back at your original starting spot after that nice nice run and game. Now you got to get 20 yards back. I, they got to limit these penalties. They've been getting a lot on their offensive side. Throwing out to the near side. Catch is complete and tackled immediately. LJ Richardson in on the catch. And I didn't see the... Number on the tackle. Could have been Jacob Jones. Yeah, it looked like number five, Jacob Jones, potentially. Yeah, nice job by him rallying up, identifying the screen. Elsie brought a little bit of motion to try to get that block kind of at the last minute to try to disguise, but he did a great job diagnosing it, breaking it down, and, and holding him for minimal gain. So a pickup of one. It'll be second down and 19 here. 10.35 to go in the half. Witkowski steps up, throws to his right, pass is complete, dodges the first tackle, and then is just annihilated. Dom Fatten in there on the tackle after the reception, and it's out across the 20 now, so still moving inch by inch if you're the Lake Central Indians. And that's just great play by linebackers, too, as well. I mean, that's when you talk about athletic linebackers. I mean, that's from Crown Point. That's the outside linebacker over there, you know, flying across, getting over to the slot on that quick, a uh, little comeback route on there, and I thought he had some field. I think if maybe he would have turned towards the sideline, he would have had a little bit more, but it, but you got an outside linebacker chasing you down that quick as soon as you catch it. it it's tough to get out of. Swarming. Yeah. yeah. That's the word that comes to mind. Three wide receivers to the left side, one to the far side. Kwiatkowski runs to his right. He has pressure behind him, passes up, and it is taken out of bounds. The intended target on the far side of the field. That is number 11. That is Mason Lopez, a senior for Lake Central. So this will bring up fourth down now for the Indians. So a little bit of positivity in terms of yardage, but they had they had the big play to start things up and then got pushed back and then had to fight their way to even get back to the original line of scrimmage. Yeah, that hurts your offensive momentum. You kind of get a little fresh, uh, breath of fresh air, and then all of a sudden it's taken right back out of you. And that now, you know, not many plays are first and 20, Second and 15, right? You try to inch it back, but when, you know, you got linebacker and creek at the defensive line that's, that's plugging up the middle, you got no run game inside it. It's, it's hard to inch back those yardage. Balden to kick, back to return for the Bulldogs. Looks like Delich and Jones. Yeah, another thing here is Crown Point's looking like they're going to get good field position again, you know, maybe plus field position even on LC's territory. So, it's tough. The LC defense, they've been pretty stout so far. I mean, obviously they've given up a couple touchdowns here, but they've been on the field so much, it's hard to expect them to be able to contain such an explosive offense when, they're been, when they've been getting so many opportunities. Here's the punt, and it's caught at the 45, but it's going to be out across the 45, so about the 43 marker. Connecting the first half and the second half of tonight's game, it's the Hose Connections Halftime Report presented by Hose Connections, proven under pressure. <laughs> and I mean that's a great play though by Jacob Jones too as well. That I mean that ball was end over end, and you talk about you know that lands and it could roll for another ten feet. He came up and got that, so he, they can start in their own field position. And a lot of times that you know returners don't get that kind of credit of coming up. It's tough to run up when you got someone in your face and catch that ball. Um, but you know that sets up their offense now, in like you said, Rick, in their own territory, which they've been basically in all night. We will have three awards we're going to hand out at the end of this one today. We've got the Crowell Company's Landry Man Superhero of the Game, brought to you by the Crowell Company. So proud to recognize the superheroes on the gridiron. Holding, receiving team. That fell at mark, 10 yards from the end of the kick. First down, drop one. We will have the Proud Union Home Play of the Game, presented by IKORCC. Learn more at IKORCC.com. In fact, actually, during that Hose Connection Halftime Report, we're going to sit down and talk with Travis Williams of IKORCC. So looking forward to that. And then we've got our Boilermakers Local 374 Blue Collar Player of the Game that we will award. Brought to you by Boilermakers Local 374. Earn while you learn with Boilermakers Local 374. I think I've gotten all of our reads in so far. <laughs> Sound good doing it. Doing a bang up job. I, you know, <laughs> well, when I work with the best in the business on either side of me. Oh. <laughs> Making me blush. Too thanks. kind. <laughs> too kind. I got paid extra to say that. <laughs> Ellison out to the left side, has room to run, gets a couple of blocks and tapped ahead, Ooh. and then taken down aggressively 
for Lake Central, number 28. That was Ryder Fernandez who caught Ellison and just speared him to the ground after a big run from Ellison. Yeah, man, that was a, that was a double leg takedown. I yeah. mean, man, you know, I wonder if that kid is a wrestler. But uh, but before that, Ellison, great run. I mean, yeah. bouncing it out, breaking multiple tackles. One of the probably the best run they've had all night. So we're starting to see the crown point running game is starting to gain some traction here. Yeah. That's where if you're Coach Bazia, like obviously now with the defense out here as long as it has, you know I'm still going to stick with it because eventually it's going to get tired out. The defense passing to your side. Delich can't make the can't make the catch, and then out on the tackle Looking for the number on my death. That's Mylon Davis there for the shot from behind on Delich. So the ball will stay on the 39-yard line here. It'll be second down and 10. Yeah, you got to feel like if Lake Central can get a stop, if they can get a stop and then try to, I mean, they just got to the, they got to the move offense. something on offense. Yeah, yeah exactly. I mean, or at least stay out on the field and just work something. Yeah. But Crown Point has other ideas. Ehrlich rolling out to the right, pass to the near side, and it's going to be incomplete. Solely the intended target. Looks like some laundry on the field. Yeah. You have some laundry at the 35-yard line on the Crown Point sideline there. Quite a bit of penalties already tonight, yeah. I'll tell you that. And it's really been both ways. Yeah. But, you know, we're talk we've talked about the great atmosphere, great night. Obviously, you know, I told you middle school night here for Lake Central. So there are three middle school programs. They got Kaler, Clark, and Grim Clark and Grimmer play together. So they're going to get honored uh, during the halftime. And then I know the class of 2003 is having a kind of a reunion. Well, eligible we'll player downfield, offense. That penalty is enforced in the previous spot. Third down. So the class of 2003 here in the house. Second down. And then USA night in the student section for Lake Central. I haven't been able to figure out what they got going on over at. That looks like it could be USA too, to be honest. Yeah, yeah it does right look. Like it does. Yes. As well, yeah, yeah. I mean, red, white, and blue all day out here. Well, those are the colors of both the schools, respectively. Here, as Ellison taken down, it'll be up to the 41-yard line. So third down and long here. It's a big play here for the Lake Central defense. Obviously, you know you got to get off the field here. You know you had some of your steam taken away from you but if you can get some momentum back here and, and get crown points offense off the field right and like we've been talking about though that lake central indians then they got to get their offense moving you know lc gets the ball to start the second half that's true i mean if they can somehow get crown point off the field and get something going on offense you know it's still only a two score game yeah so i mean this is not over yet at all but they got to get off the field right here this is a huge play 8 10 left to go in the half Ehrlich looking to throw to his left. Hines solely gets a few yards and tackled about the 35-yard line right around there. It's not going to be enough for a first down, so fourth down coming up. But if you're crown point, this fourth down maybe feels a little bit more manageable. Yeah, yeah, that was a real good play. And obviously, you know, you got about, what, six, seven yards to go in the way your offense has been getting. I mean, I, I don't see them doing that little pooch punt or nothing. I think they're going for it. Yeah, no, it was a great play called by Crown Point. LC came with an inside blitz from their linebackers and uh, Crown Point went with another one of those quick wide receiver screens to the outside, but the LC DBs did a nice job making the tackle in space. Man in motion, two receivers to the right side. That's the side that Ehrlich is running to. Pass on the near sideline. Pass is bobbled and it is dropped by Delich in there on the tackle, on the coverage. Number 32 for Lake Central. That's Julian Bibian. Yeah, it was nice play call by Crown Point. They brought a tight end over to seal the edge, did a little bit of rollout, give Ehrlich more time. Delich was open, and he had the ball in his hands. He usually makes that catch, but a great job by the LCDB, swan away at it to the very end and uh, making Delich take his eyes off of it and drop it, basically. Yeah. But, but, I mean, it feels like we're kind of beating a dead horse here at this point, but <laughs> at this point, I mean, the defense has done what it is, yes. what it has to do. It's the offense time. I mean, it, this, this is what they have to do. They get a big run out here to the right side and tripped up. But a big gain here on the run from Amarion Brooks. Again, yeah. to the outside. outside. They tried to run counter, which is an inside run play. They pulled the guard and the tackle, but Brooks just bounced it right away pretty much immediately because he knows that it's been tough sledding inside against these crown point uh, front seven. So 
I think LC needs to keep hitting that to the outside. Don't try to test these guys to the inside. Soften them up, then make them defend the entire field. Then you can try to hit them inside. Yeah, absolutely. Well, one of the questions coming in, we knew that Xavier Williams wasn't going to be starting in this one today. So was Lake Central going to be more one-dimensional and pass or the uh, the handoff? Nothing to do back to the 40-yard line. So were they going to be one-dimensional? Was it going to be a big passing game night? Amari, Amari Brooks trying to trying to get something going on that run game. I mean, the passing game hasn't been there totally either. We saw a big 10-yard run by by Chase Kwiatkowski, that's so far really been the biggest play of the game. Yeah, yeah. I mean, LC tried to run the exact same play that they just ran right before that, but Crown Point is too well coached to run the same play two times in a row and expect it to work both times. Three wide receivers to the near side, one to the right. Kwiatkowski tries to get through the pressure, does, steps up, gets around it again, in for the first down and more. Put it on the near sideline, steps out of bounds around the 37-yard line, maybe the 38. That's the spark they needed. I mean, just yeah. great, great feet by Krakowski there. Obviously, I mean, he broke two tackles. I, I thought he was going to go down there. But, you know, keeping your feet, keeping your knees up and running and making something out of nothing there. I mean, great coverage. They ran man over here on their trips, and they were locked down. I mean, he had nowhere else to go, and he, he made it with his feet. Yeah, that was all him. I mean, the LC needed a spark like that. They need something to get some momentum on offense. And, you know, that might have been it. They need to follow it up, though, with more plays. Three receivers. Fumble! Who came up with it will be the question. Again, on an exchange, losing the ball. So just after you get that big play and that big, you know, something to do, then the miscue happens. Oh. You know, if, when you're playing a team, well, LC, they're playing a team like Crown Point that is, you know, very good. You, you can't have penalties. You can't have multiple fumbled exchanges. You have to play pretty much perfectly I say if you want to actually win. And right now they've had a lot of mistakes, and that's really been killing them. Kwiatkowski looks to throw, steps up to the left side. Pass is going to be incomplete, and we will see a flag. And the LC sideline cheers with enthusiasm. And i got to say, Crown Point has shown out tonight as well. Those bleachers on the other side of the field are pretty... Pretty full of Crown Point Bulldog fans as well. Yeah, they got kids running around the concourse over there too. This, like Doug said earlier, this is a great facility. Yeah. It is a college-like facility for sure. But that's another. You know, like I said, LC needed to string some plays together. And right there, you know, you don't get the pass, but you get the pass that's interference. Defense. That ball is a force, 15 yards from the previous spot. Yeah, you're in territory right now. That I mean, you have to score here. This, this is an area where you have to score. Not whatever a field the, goal. Yeah, it's whatever you got in your playbook, if you got a trick play or something to get your offense going, you have to score on this drive. Three wide receivers, two to the near side, one to the far side. Brooks just to the right. Kwiatkowski keeps, runs ahead, and is taken down up to around the at the 20 yard line so it'll be about two yards shy of a first down so it'll be second down and two coming up another big run from the legs of trace kwikowski who came in today with 25 rushes 135 yards into today's game and he has surpassed that for sure they've been hitting them with the outside run there and right there was a fake option outside run and kwikowski kept it up the inside to my point earlier, you got to soften them up outside to try to hit them inside because inside, just going straight at them, they're too big, strong, physical, and well coached. So Brooks still stands behind, another three wide receivers out. This time it is to Brooks who bounces, looks like he was going to go to the right side and then tries to cut back inside. And while he didn't go down, he found no running room to that right side. And you know he does he does do a very good job climbing the ladder as well right now you, you know you're seeing that from him where he's he's kind of hitting that a and b gap he's got to bounce off his guard tackle and kind of make some things happen here again i i like that read option i if i'm lc i'm going back to that and i'm having kwikowski pull that thing and, and hit the opposite side of the field you know it's it's obviously fourth down territory you got two plays to get two yards i mean if you can't get this if you're Rick, if yeah. your coach good, I mean. Kwiatkowski keeps, runs to the left side this time. It's going to be close to that marker. Did he get just enough? He might have gotten an extra yard. It's looking like the far side official right near that marker. I haven't seen a signal to say move the chains yet. And they're going to probably measure this particular spot. 
as we are right near that 17 yard line that they were trying to get and they are going to bring the chains out yeah i like that play call there just taking Kwiatkowski just on a straight QB sweep to the outside, pulled a guard, had the tight end lead up to, just trying to outflank him. And uh, we'll see what the measurement says here. I think he got it, but. And the call. It is a first down. Yeah, I think, you know, Lake Central, if they're going to have success, they're going to have to keep running with him. You know, I mean. And you might even see a rollout and kind of over the top as they float up, um, but they're going to have to keep using his feet if they want this offense I'd to be the, successful tonight. The running game has really been on the on the feet of Chase Kwiatkowski. Yeah. And you know what? We talked about this is a must-score position for Lake Central, and I agree with you, but the more important thing that's happening right now, guys, the defense is resting for Lake Central. Yes, right yes. <laughs> Spreading the ball out a little bit. Kwiatkowski looked in a fake, a delayed handoff, but he ends up running a little delayed run as well. And he gets tackled for a loss of two. It looked like there was some confusion. Yeah, like they were trying to, to run a read option uh, again or even a handoff. And uh, Krakowski just said, oh, oh, looks like I'm running it. And uh, unfortunately, he just ran a little bit out of time. He was a little too late at that point. Yeah, no, Krakowski stuck the ball out to have that kind of mesh for the read option. But the running back just went straight to block. And again, you can't have those sorts of mental errors against a team like Crown Point. Trying to get up to the seven yard line. It'll be second down and 13. Ball on the 20. Handoff is to Brooks. He runs up the middle, tackled out across the 20 at about the 16 yard line. So it'll be third down coming up here. You know, simple, obviously, you know, reading again. And well, what I would like to see from Lake Central here is almost a play action out of this, right? You're going to get those linebackers that are going to bite up. Get one of your receivers over across the middle and see what you can do. you you got to throw in some play action here if you want your run game to still have some success. Especially because even though it is third down, they know that it's four down territory. So Absolutely. they're probably still going to play the run, and they will bite on that play action if you did it right here. Seamus Molaski in on that last tackle. One of the two-way players. High snap. Doesn't have much time. Gets around. Gets to the 15 and is tackled out across the 10. And that looks like it might still be just a bit short of a first down. But certainly going to be a very manageable fourth down if they didn't get it. And that looked like a whole lot of uh, Kwiatkowski just getting kind of a prayer, kind of get tack right, getting he, tackled he, ahead for a positive yardage. He was getting pinballed all around there but he fell for I mean he's what 6'2 200 pounds so he's a pretty big kid himself he's got some size to him and uh, right there he got the hard yardage that they needed and huge play right now so they need one yard to get the first down and you hear the crowd screaming Kwiatkowski runs ahead gets through and it's going to be tackled ball is fumbled in the back of the end zone was he down by contact it's a big play here what they're going to call I haven't seen an indication just yet one, well, the ref just back there said touchback, and the one over here is saying down. So <laughs> We'll find out here. I thought he was down, to be honest. It did look like he was down as he was stretching over, trying to stretch over. But I don't like know if down. we have a region sports replay queued up. And they're going to say it's a touchback. Ooh. Crown point ball. Oh, that's tough. Yeah, that, that that's real tough. I mean, you, you're on the one-yard line. I mean, you can almost guarantee that's probably going to be a touchdown, and now it's a touchback, and now they're coming out of the 20, even yeah. on top of that. Do we have a replay? Yeah. Let's, let's <laughs> we'll see. take a look at that. Rick, I'll let you uh, kind of take a look at that when you're closest to the uh, to the action there. Yeah, here we go. I, I think he was down, to be uh, honest. Right there, it looked like he was down. But, again, hard to see. The officials are a lot, obviously a lot closer than I am right here. But it did look like he was down. But... That's not how it was called on the field, and uh, LC, you got to go come out here, play defense for one minute, and get this to the half, you know, and try to regroup. You had a really great drive there. You got some confidence on offense. You showed that you can move the ball against these guys. So don't let that, uh, you know, cloud your mind right now. Give up any more big plays. And it looks like the officials having a few words. I don't know if – I can't tell if they're hostile words or if they're just kind of letting them know where they're supposed to be in terms of placement on the, for the coaches on the sideline here. Uh but if like I mean obviously it, it, it hurts to not come up come away with that touchdown that you're looking for and Ehrlich here stepping up has all time the throw there is a flag in the play and a big hit put on to stop the momentum the big hit 
put on for Lake Central defense, Jeffrey Lucas, the senior. But we do have a flag on the play. It looks like it's probably going to be against Crown Point. Yeah, it looked like he was holding over here on the right tackle over here. But, I mean, if you are going to try to walk away from a positive for Lake Central on that last play, they put it, they sustained a drive. They yeah. put something together. Yeah, I mean, that's going to build your confidence. Obviously, going into halftime, too, as well, if they get a stop here, ultimately. But, you know, now you go in that locker room saying, hey, we can move the ball. Yeah. That's, that's what we got to do in the second half. And not only do they move the ball, they move the ball with fumbled snaps, yeah. busted plays. Yeah. So they didn't actually execute perfectly either. So... Well, it goes to show them you don't need to execute perfectly. And we have a timeout. We're going to take it with them. You're watching Game Night. Brought to you by Von Tobel on the Region Sports Network, the only game in town. Somebody's getting booed in there. You can't get to the store? Shop online with Strack and Van Til to go. Our to go service is easy to use and it can save you time and money. Once your order is in, our own Strack and Van Til team preps your order with care. For delivery or pickup, enjoy the convenience of letting our to go team shop for you. Enjoy your special moments. Sign up online today at shop.strackandvantil.com. Yeah. Welcome back to game night here on the Region Sports Network. Make sure you stay tuned. We'll have the host connection halftime report for you in just about a minute or so. Unless the clock stops for some reason. We got exactly one minute until halftime. Crown Point just kind of trying to get any yeah. kind of yardage they possibly can and just kind of waste this this final minute just with some yardage here. Lake Central whose defense has got a little bit of a rest, has been really, really solid so far. Yeah, it's 15 nothing in favor of Crown Point, but you know what? I've watched in the last couple of weeks these halftime scores, usually a little bit bigger these last couple of yeah. weeks. So Lake Central's doing something a little bit different, a little bit right. Yeah, you know, I mean, Crown Point scores on a busted play, then you get a turnover and a short field. Well, listen, said, I'm going to make a lot of positive yards happen here and tries to get back to that original line of scrimmage says I'm not going to just waste this half here I'm going to try to get something to do yeah, well yeah if they bust with another one of that they get another first down I think you know then they let let Noah kind of rip it downfield at first it looked like they were just going to run it out and get out of the half but a couple more you know, one more big run like that in the first down Noah might be slinging that thing downfield they have two timeouts left as well yeah 28 and a half seconds to go until that hose connection halftime report Michael Brander, Doug Ashenbaugh, Rick Novak here with you. Happy to have you alongside. Justin Cole working the production, doing a great job. We've got Mike Dewan and Scott Stencil upstairs working the camera. Ellison breaking some tackles, getting around. The edge a little bit here and uh, getting a first down here with 22 and 22.6 uh, seconds remaining. So not totally just wasting this final minute. Trying to no, get, not at all. Trying to get something going here. Yeah, they're not using their timeout here, yeah, though, after yeah. the first down. I think they are just going to let this yeah. one go to the half. Like you said, though, LC, I mean, you still got to feel good about this first half if you're LC, for sure. I mean, this is not um, a bad first half for you guys. I mean, especially since you did move the ball there on offense at the end. So some things to build on, especially because you do get the ball to start the second half. They just got to... On offense, they really start got to capitalize on that momentum. No more mistakes, no more fumbles, etc. And uh, the defense still needs to be just as good in the second half as they are, were in the first, and that's going to be tough. Yeah. All right, that'll do it. We'll head to the halftime. We'll bring you the Hose Connections halftime report on the other side of this break. You're watching Game Night, built by Von Tobel on the Region Sports Network, the only game in town. Some see a student athlete working on a shot. We see a powerful lesson in persistence. Some see a student preparing for success on an exam. We see a student athlete preparing for success in life. Proud to keep education in front of athletics since 1903. 
When life takes you places and you can't get to the store, shop online with Strack and Van Til to go. Our to go service is easy to use and it can save you time and money. Once your order is in, our own Strack and Van Til team preps your order with care. For delivery or pickup, enjoy the convenience of letting our to go team shop for you. Enjoy your special moments. Sign up online today at shop.strackandvantil.com. Are you a builder, remodeler, or homeowner? If so, you need quality materials at the right price. Whether you're just getting started or a seasoned pro, Von Tobel's friendly and knowledgeable staff can help. And since we're 100% employee-owned, every time you come in, you're dealing with an owner. We have a great selection for kitchen, bath, flooring, decking, and more. Plus, we offer free design consults to help you with your next project. Scan or visit vontobels.com today to book your free consultation. Von Tobel, building better together. Since 2000, Hose Connections in Hammond has been a premier leader in the hydraulics industry. Hose Connections is a one-stop shop offering quality hydraulic and pneumatic products and services. Hose Connections takes pride in not only meeting, but exceeding customers' expectations. To learn all about the products and services that Hose Connections offers, visit hoseconnectionsinc.com or call 219-844-6570. Hose Connections in Hammond, proven under pressure. Welcome back to game night here on the Region Sports Network, built by Von Tobel. Michael Brennan here along with Travis Williams of IKORCC. Travis, good to see you here tonight. It's glad to be here. Glad to be here. And you've seen a pretty good football game so far. You are tuned into the Hose Connections halftime report, brought to you by Hose Connections on Kennedy Avenue in Hammond. Visit them on the web at hoseconnectionsinc.com. Hose Connections proven under pressure. We're going to have the Lake Central Band performing as well with some of their middle schoolers in there as well. But you're here today nice, to talk nice. a little bit. It's great atmosphere, right? Absolutely. I mean, beautiful weather. Beautiful weather. And you're rep See, we wanted to make sure that we were we were balanced here. I decided to wear the blue uh, RSN gear and you wore the uh, the red, <laughs> you know, blue red. and red. We want to make sure we're balanced here. Absolutely. But you're here to talk about a little bit about uh, the Indiana Kentucky Ohio Regional Council of Carpenters. So uh, I'll let you kind of talk about what the what the company is and uh, the goal and uh, maybe why you're here today. So definitely. Uh, so I'm Travis Williams. Uh, I'm a business representative for the Carpenters Union. Uh, this is an organization that consists of over 35,000 carpenters. Uh, we have carpenters throughout various communities, also Lake, uh, Lake Central uh, school systems and the Crown Point. Uh, so we definitely like to uh, participate and, uh, and get involved with these games because uh, we make a close connection with uh, Region Sports Network cause, because we feel, my personal opinion, as uh, athletes, I feel is a more successful in different traits. So we make a huge, huge uh, 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 connection with the athletes because uh, on job sites, you, you got to communicate, and we feel like athletes. I mean, you, you're coming from a structure. You have coaches that you know, everybody's communicating. You know, with one person fail, we all fail. The same as the job sites. Uh, Very so, teammate oriented. Exactly, teammate oriented. So we feel, uh, you know, the reality is not all athletes are going to go to college. So college is not for everybody. So we're just giving those opportunities, creating that pathway for those athletes that that might want to transition into the trades. So uh, just that's what we do. We just we just hear. Uh, just kind of interacting with the athletes, uh, just giving them that exposure, letting them know. Hell, we actually have pretty, I mean, a lot of athletes that's in the organization. Uh, we just hired a, a three-time state champion, Sean McMurray. Uh, he he uh, was a three-time state champion at Portage High School. Very cool. Athlete. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, obviously – Obviously, other than athletes as well, but certainly putting the name out there with with a lot of these games that we've got here around the region, sports network, certainly a uh, a fun thing that we're able to do is bring that play of the game, just like you guys are making all those important uh, decisions out there and putting, Absolutely. you know, I in in my opinion, you know, I am an educator, I, I'm in the in the teaching business, and uh, you know, I one of the things that I have championed for a number of years is that yeah, not everyone's going to college. You're, I mean, you you're right on point with that, and trades are very important, carpenters and all and all all types of trades but carpenters in this particular case so if they were to join what can what can they possibly expect as a carpenter what did it what, what is it that you guys would do so as a carpenter we uh we build homes uh, a lot of times that lot that's that's what people think that's all we build so we build homes every bridge that you cross is built by a carpenter uh we have carpenters in industrial mills the refineries uh we have carpenters build schools we have a lot of school work that's going on right now so uh we do a lot. It's a lot of different things that carpenters do. And also we have mill rights. Uh, if you're a person that's uh, into welding, uh, just in industrial uh, mechanics, 
Millwrights might be a good avenue for you. So it's a lot of different things that we do in this organization. It's a reason why we have 35,000 carpenters. And if there's uh, someone that is – sorry, I didn't mean to step on you. Okay. If there is uh, someone tuned in that is that is interested or maybe there's a parent that's interested that's maybe uh, watching their kid play in the game today, how can uh, they go about potentially joining you guys at the Indiana-Kentucky Ohio Regional Council of Carpenters? So absolutely. There's many different ways people can come in. Uh, you definitely want to go to our website, uh, IK, www.ikorcc. Uh, dot com and fill out an application to go through the apprenticeship uh, program uh, and also uh, just communicate reach out to us uh, it's 10 business reps in our office you can communicate with me Travis Williams or anybody else let me know a lot of times people have experience that comes into, into the trade you don't have to just not I mean you don't have to know anybody you, you can it's, it's a pathway for everybody it's an opportunity for everybody to trans transition into the organization so uh, yeah so a good way to start, IKORCC.com. We do reference that quite a bit here on the Region Sports Network. i got to ask you right off the bat, you've seen a half so far a little yeah. bit, uh, maybe having to travel a little bit to get up here to the press box. It's about a country mile up in the, up in the atmosphere. Good workout. Here. Good, good workout, good workout. Good thing I'm an athlete. Do you got, do you got <laughs> a uh, early candidate for a play of the game? Was there something that kind of stood out to you right off the bat? Maybe you know, a you little know, spoiler? <laughs> I, can't give, I can't give too much of a spoiler alert. I mean, obviously but, uh, we got a second half to play still. <laughs> Absolutely. I just look forward to a good game. You know, it, it's good to see these Northwest Indiana schools competing and being the high-level uh, competitors that, that they are. I mean, we're going to – Everybody know Northwest Indiana produced the best athletes. Let's be real. Uh, <laughs> I, I, we can't disagree <laughs> with that. It uh, may not show always in state titles, but we yeah. know we've got a lot of great, great athletes here around Northwest Indiana. Well, Travis, thank you very much for coming up Absolutely. and talking about IKORCC a little bit. We still got halftime here. We'll talk about that second half in just a moment. You are watching Game Night on the Region Sports Network, built by Von Tobel, the only game in town. Some see a student athlete working on a shot. We see a powerful lesson in persistence. Some see a student preparing for success on an exam. We see a student athlete preparing for success in life. Proud to keep education in front of athletics since 1903. When life takes you places and you can't get to the store, shop online with Strack and Van Til to go. Our to go service is easy to use and it can save you time and money. Once your order is in, our own Strack and Van Til team preps your order with care. For delivery or pickup, enjoy the convenience of letting our to go team shop for you. Enjoy your special moments. Sign up online today at shop.strackandvantil.com. Are you a builder, remodeler, or homeowner? If so, you need quality materials at the right price. Whether you're just getting started or a seasoned pro, Von Tobel's friendly and knowledgeable staff can help. And since we're 100% employee-owned, every time you come in, you're dealing with an owner. We have a great selection for kitchen, bath, flooring, decking, and more. Plus, we offer free design consults to help you with your next project. Scan or visit vontobels.com today to book your free consultation. Von Tobel, building better together. Since 2000, Hose Connections in Hammond has been a premier leader in the hydraulics industry. Hose Connections is a one-stop shop offering quality hydraulic and pneumatic products and services. Hose Connections takes pride in not only meeting, but exceeding customers' expectations. To learn all about the products and services that Hose Connections offers, visit HoseConnectionsInc.com or call 219-844-6570. Hose Connections in Hammond, proven under pressure. Welcome back, back to game night here on the Region Sports Network. You are tuned in to the Hose Connection Halftime Report. Michael Brander here back with Doug Anshinbaugh and Rick Novak. Guys, sorry we had to put the camera away because you guys aren't allowed to be on, on camera. There was a rule against that. It was something in your contracts, I was told. <laughs> I got a face for radio, what can I say? <laughs> Join the club, my friend. All right, so, I, I mean, we've talked about it all half long, but really what it came down to is Lake Central really stepping up on defense. Picking up a little momentum going into the halftime on offense. Again, shooting themselves in the foot, as we've seen most most often. But Crown Point still, I mean, not not the explosive Crown Point that we've seen in the past couple of weeks. But this team is just solid. you got to feel like this is gonna it, it's going to happen at some point here. They're just going to break out. Well, you know, I had a Crown Point 
sectional game last year against Portage, and it kind of was the same style. Portage actually took the lead into half, 14-7, but Crown Point came out and uh, ended up winning the game 49-14, to I want to say. It. You know, Coach Buzz, I'm sure he's in the locker room right now making all sorts of adjustments to their offense, thinking about different ways they're going to be able to exploit LC's defense. But to LC's credit, they have hung tough here. Only a couple plays have really decided this game. The busted coverage over the top, and then you know, a quick turnover and a short field for Crown Point. So without those things happening, LC is right there. You know, and LC easily could have been, you know, only down a touchdown here if they don't fumble the ball there at the one yard line. So just come out here that you get the ball to start the second half and do what you did on that last drive and put the ball in the end zone and then we got a whole new ball game here because you're only down a touchdown. Doug, I know you are feverishly writing down uh, scores that we'll <laughs> display here in just a little while. Any thoughts on uh, what you've seen so far that might? Uh yeah, I, I think the biggest thing is is, is obviously Lake Central's defense. I, I, past three weeks, Crown Point has had a lot more points in the first half, and being able to limit that high power offense for Crown Point is is key for Lake Central. And as we keep talking about, is you have to limit the mistakes, you have to limit those fumbled snaps, uh, the fumble on the end, or, or going across the goal line, the penalties that you're seeing. You know, they have to minimize those that on offense, but. You know, coming out here on this very first drive is you, you got to make a statement that hey, we know we're in the game, we're going to stay in this game, and we're going to come down and we're going to score. And you got to find whatever's going to keep working, which I think is Krakowski running the ball, honestly, for this offense for Lake Central. On the flip side, Crown Point, I, I guess you could kind of say, is struggling offensively with only scoring 15 points. You know what? What are you going to do? What are you going to change there? We saw some spark from Ellison there at the end of the first half. The run game did start coming alive. I think you're going to see a lot more of that, a lot more play action. Uh, you know, deep down the center, one on one, use your six four receivers that you got there, and you know some jump balls uh, from Crown Point in the second half. One thing I don't have the number in front of me, but just get your take on this real quick, based on what you can maybe remember. Third down, I don't feel like there's been a lot of third down conversions for Crown Point tonight that nope. I can really think of that have really kind of been a difference maker in this game. And when you're coming into today, you know, averaging about forty two percent on third down conversions. We talked about how good Lake Central's defense has been, but they're preventing them from covering on th converting on third down and even fourth down. So that might be a number to look at going forward, too. What are they doing on third down? What plays are they running on third down to try to get those conversions? Well, LC, LC has held Crown Point to be in third and long a lot, yeah. and I think that's helped them. And Crown Point, their offense really hasn't actually had sustained drives. They've had a couple big plays. You know, they had the big play to start to Delich, but then they stalled. Then they finally they had the touchdown to um uh who was it sourcey or Soli. Soli, excuse they got too many s s e <laughs> you know and too many guys with rhyming nickname not rhyming last names but so crown points offense really has not had really sustained drives they've been kind of start and stop and you know you, you can say their offense really hasn't been very good even though they are up 15 nothing their defense has been dominant but their offense i know coach Mazia probably wants a lot better performance from them and it goes to show you that the lc defense is up to task so far and it's going to be on them to not get worn down in the second half i think that's a big thing Crown Point has a big offensive line. They've been, they've had many possessions in the first half. You got to think they're probably going to have a, a few more possessions here in the second half. And is the LC defense strong enough and conditioned enough to hold strong against these guys for all four quarters of this game? Because that's really where Crown Point has been able to blow the do doors off teams throughout this year is because they've run it up in the third and fourth quarter. Yeah, you, you talk about the Crown Point offense. I, it's only been two big plays. I, I mean, honestly, right. that, that's all it's been on their score. It, it's not like they've – well, they haven't had a chance to go 80 yards. They've been in there, you know, on their side of the field the, the whole game pretty much. But it, it's just been two plays. The Lake Central Indian football defense is playing lights out. And two big plays, you know, doesn't take away from how well they truly are playing. But, you know, to your point, Rick, is are they still conditioned enough? Are they able to keep this up in the second half? I can tell you what, though, is if they do – it's going to be a tight ball game down to the down to the end, I think. Yeah, if it continues this way, yeah, I agree. It's going to be a tight ball game, especially if Lake Central can get something going on offense. All right, we're going to step aside for just a moment. We'll come back and wrap through or go through some of the scores going on around the region. But you are watching the Host Connection Halftime Report right here on the Region Sports Network, built by Von Tobel, the only game in town. Since 2000, Host Connections in Hammond has been a premier leader in the hydraulics industry. 
Hose Connections is a one-stop shop offering quality hydraulic and pneumatic products and services. Hose Connections takes pride in not only meeting, but exceeding customers' expectations. To learn all about the products and services that Hose Connections offers, visit HoseConnectionsInc.com or call 219-844-6570. Hose Connections in Hammond, proven under pressure. Are you a builder, remodeler, or homeowner? If so, you need quality materials at the right price. Whether you're just getting started or a seasoned pro, Von Tobel's friendly and knowledgeable staff can help. And since we're 100% employee-owned, every time you come in, you're dealing with an owner. We have a great selection for kitchen, bath, flooring, decking, and more. Plus, we offer free design consults to help you with your next project. Scan or visit vontobels.com today to book your free consultation. Von Tobel, building better together. When life takes you places and you can't get to the store, shop online with Strack and Van Til to go. Our to go service is easy to use and it can save you time and money. Once your order is in, our own Strack and Van Til team preps your order with care. For delivery or pickup, enjoy the convenience of letting our to go team shop for you. Enjoy your special moments. Sign up online today at shop.strackandvantil.com. Some see a student athlete working hard in the weight room. We see a future leader learning there are no shortcuts to success. Some see a start to a swim meet. We see the starting blocks for life. Proud to keep education in front of athletics since 1903. Welcome back to Game Night, built by Von Tobel here on the Region Sports Network. You are tuned in to the Hose Connections Halftime Report, brought to you by Hose Connections on Kennedy Avenue in Hammond. Visit them on the web at hoseconnectionsinc.com. Mayor Pete Land and the Crown Point Pace Department are proud to support Crown Point Bulldog football and say, Go Bulldogs! Crown Point remains dedicated to preserving history, celebrating everyday life, providing the best in-city services, and encouraging smart growth. Mayor Land and the Pace team invite everyone to Bulldog Park for Oktoberfest on October 6th and 7th. Join us for German Music and Fair. For more information, contact the Pace Department at 219-661-2271. I do enjoy me some good Oktoberfest, but you know what I enjoy more, fellas? I love hearing some Strack and Van Til hometown scoreboard, a <laughs> scoreboard updates. What a you have this look on your face like you are lying through your teeth. <laughs> I would never lie about getting score updates from the great Doug Ashenbaugh. Yeah, so I mean, we'll take it off over here. So obviously we had Andre and 59ers taking on the Munster Mustangs tonight, both 1-2 and two, uh, on the year. And, and Andrean's up right now in the second quarter, 14-7. Now mind you, these uh, these scores may have changed. We might be slightly behind, but the last ones that we had. Um, didn't send have a, you don't send updates admit, in. I say, you don't got to <laughs> admit that to people. <laughs> if you're listening, please send updated scores in, please. Yeah, and then if contact you, if you, Rick if Novak if at 2 one No, 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 no. <laughs> And obviously right here over here at the Burial Gowns, we got Crown Point 15-0. We've been talking about that game all night. A little bit of a shocker going on over here. we got the Westside Cougars currently up 14-7 over the number nine Region Sports Network, number nine River Forest Ingots in the second. Griffith and Whiting was 0-0 last update that we had. And another one, the Highland Trojans taking on the Hammond Central Wolves, number seven Hammond Central Wolves there. And Highland's up in the second quarter right now, 7-0. Yeah, number seven, Highland or uh, Hanover Central. Man, oh man, joining that conference for the first year. But all of a sudden, uh, I'm sorry, Hammond Central, yeah. I mean, getting to play against, I thought you were talking, sorry, I was looking at that wrong. But <laughs> Hammond Central, yeah, but still a shocker with all the points they've been putting up this season. Yeah, but Highland's been playing very well. They have. This year. They I, have. I mean, they've been playing very, very well. Then I, know, I know one guy back at the studio, Jay Simmons, he is probably just jumping up for joy <laughs> if he hasn't torn anything that, yet. That you, you're right about that. <laughs> Moving along over here, the Morton Governors 1 and 2 on the year, taking on Penn's Kingman 2 and 1. Right now, Penn is all over them at 35 to nothing. We got another tight one over here, the number 6 Hobart Brickies taking on the Kankakee Valley Cougars 20. Hobart only up 28 20 over there. KV playing very well out over there at, uh, against the Brickies. LaPorte Slicers versus the Chesterton Trojans. Currently, the Chesterton Trojans up 14 0 in the second quarter. Moving on to number three, Hanover Central Wildcats against the Lowell Red Devils. And, uh, you know, we talk about the Lowell Red Devils always midseason on. They, they start picking things up. Right now they're playing very well. Hanover's only up in the second quarter, 7 nothing. 
Moving along, number two Valparaiso Vikings are currently on top 17 to seven over number five Michigan City Wolves. That's another great game we got going on in the region. Moving over to Maryville Pirates, obviously tough loss last week against Crown Point. Coming back playing the Portage Indians, they're currently up 10-0 in the second quarter. Calumet Warriors, 1-2 on the year. South Bend Washington Cougars, 0-3 on the year. And currently we're tied up 6-6 in the second quarter. And that's what we got going on, Mike. Man, if you're the Portage Indians, do you, you want to maybe like look at trying to get a different week to play the Maryville Pirates yeah. going forward? I mean, you get Maryville gets Crown Point, and it's been a couple years now that Crown Point's gotten that advantage. But then, you know, obviously you come back and you're just trying to get some redemption and try to get some good, you know, opportunities going on your side. And Portage is like, come on now. Yeah, it's, it's a tough week to play Maryville. Uh, you're exactly right on, on that one. But but again, you know, against a great Maryville Pirates team, 10-0. I know you haven't scored yet, but you're playing pretty well against well, a team like that. I mean, to, that's, to the credit, I mean, that's kind of to a reverse effect almost. That's what we're seeing here, stopping yeah. a really great team for – the defense, or for the uh, the Indians, we'll say it both way, Portage <laughs> and Lake Central here. Langos Pizza has been a favorite spot since 1979. Enjoy pizza, sandwiches, and more. Dine in and carry out. Langos serves Northwest Indiana from three their three locations in Highland, Sherryville, and Crown Point. Order online at langospizza.com. Langos Pizza, pizza, the official pizza of the region sports network. I am officially hungry now for this broadcast and I don't know who Julian is but I see a sign here that says happy birthday Julian. Actually it's number 32 for uh, Lake Central maybe so Julian Bibian is on Lake Central's team so that might be they have a number 32 on there so apparently it's his That's birthday today. Happy, happy birthday to happy birthday Julian. Happy birthday Julian. See if you don't bring a sign how would we know? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I mean his family has no idea that we're talking about it. They'll find out at some point, maybe. <laughs> All right, we're getting set for the start of the second half, so we thank you for tuning in to the Hose Connections Halftime Report, brought to you by HoseConnectionsInc.com. For more information, Hose Connections proven under pressure. Do, 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 do. Like the jingle. I, you know, I try to bring the fun every single week. It's Got easier. You. Keeping it lively. Oh, yes. This is going to be a Quintel kickoff. This kickoff and all kickoffs are presented by Quintel Incorporated. Quintel Incorporated handling jobs of all sizes throughout the country since 1994. Lake Central will take over offensively after this kickoff. We'll bring you that Gladish Law Group starting lineup. And that, very loud in my ear from our <laughs> crowd, Mike, as both Lake Central and Crown Point student sections have been uh, doing a little party in the USA so far tonight. And this kickoff taken at about the two-yard line. Lake Central trying to get some good field position. Tripped up at the 20. So if it had been a touchback, that's basically where they were going to be anyway. So we'll take a look. at It's time for the uh, Gladish Law Group lineups for the second half for the Lake Central offense. At quarterback again, Chase Kwiatkowski. Your running back is going to be Amarion Brooks. Your halfback is Owen Denny. Your receivers, LJ Richardson, James Graham the third, and then Mason Lopez. And then your offensive line... Little Jimmy, Jimmy Johnson, Andy Allegria, Brogan Damron, Matthew Kafka, and Jonathan Ross. For the Crown Point Bulldogs, you got Nate Cock, Mark Gonzalez, Seamus Mulaski, Will Clark, Drew Kroll, Trevor Gibbs, Dom Fatten, Jacob Jones. As Lake Central tries to get something going here, a big run already for Amarion Brooks to get things started here in the second half. Jalen Kelly, Griffin Van Tischelt, and Landon Delich round out that Crown Point defense. Getting everyone in there. That was impressive. Nice run to start there for LC, bouncing it to the outside, getting the first down. Again, I don't think they're going to have much success going straight ahead at Crown Point in the teeth of the defense. They need to get something going to the outside, and they've had some success so far doing that. I think they need to keep that up in the second half. Yeah, I agree. I, you got to get that. You got to bounce outside. You got to be able to stretch those outside linebackers if you want anything up the middle. So apparently, you have to give a shout out here, Co uh, Coach. Ball? Yeah, I sure do. Obviously, you know, I coach Pop Warner, and uh, one of my little guys is watching right now, Jackson Aww. Meyer. There you so go. So, big shout-out to Jackson Meyer, the South Lake Red Devils ate you. Jackson, you promised me you are going to have the best game on Sunday now that I gave you a shout-out, kid. <laughs> I'm sure he's grinning ear to ear <laughs> right about now. There's something a little special when you do get your name shouted out like that. Um, oh, yeah. 
Did you guys ever make it on TV when you like a, at a sporting event? Have you ever made it on TV that you know of? Region Sports Network when <laughs> I played <laughs> yeah. high school. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There you go. <laughs> and a handoff is to Brooks, who's able to maybe get back to that line or maybe get a yard on that. And it looks like it was already the uh, the one yard gain, so they might move it back to. So it's gonna be third down and nine. It looks like. Look, I was gonna get blown up from the start though. It's this Crown Point defense is so fast and swarming to the ball that even if you are trying to bounce it to the outside, their pursuit is elite and it's really tough sledding right now. LC, I mean, right now you're in backed up third and long. You probably got to pass it, and maybe that's going to be a good thing for them because right now the running game isn't doing anything. Well, the running game has only really been the most effective off the legs of Chase Kwiatkowski. He looks to throw. Well, now he takes and runs, and he gets a few yards here. It's a first down up to the 45. Just talked about his legs, put the wheels underneath him, and there he goes. Yeah, that's this is what LC needs. I, I know it was, you know, good coverage, and he had to take off, but but you got to use his feet, and you got to continue keep using his feet if you want to have success. I sound like a broken record, I understand, but their highlight of their offense tonight has been Kukowski running the ball. Crown points in this man coverage, and when you play this man coverage, sometimes the quarterback is going to be wide open. You saw that the middle of the field just opened wide up. Kukowski just recognized it, saw that everybody else was covered, and tucked the ball down and gained 15 yards for a big first down. Brooks in the backfield. you got three wide receivers, one at the top, one to the near side, maybe four actually near that Near that line, looking to throw, Kwiatkowski looking to air it out, left side, passes, incomplete. We will not see a flag, pass intended for LJ Richardson. Coming in this, this week, eight catches, 158 yards, a couple of touchdowns. Great defense put up there from Crown Point. That's, we haven't been noting it nearly as much tonight as Jay and I did last week, but they're having themselves a pretty good game as well, obviously keeping yeah. Lake Central off the board. Yeah, I mean, a goose egg. Any Anytime you're going out and you're putting a goose egg up, I mean, your defense coordinator is extremely happy with you. Well, they're averaging, I mean, week seven gave up one touchdown, extra yeah. point, one touchdown, extra point, week two, and last week giving up a touchdown and couldn't kick the extra point because time expired in the game. Kwiatkowski keeps... Defense not fooled. Picks up about to the 49-yard line, though. They went back to that kind of power read option, taking Kwiatkowski straight up the middle. Got four or five yards out of it. Sets up third and a lot more manageable. You're probably in four-down territory here, so maybe you try to run the ball here, get you know a couple more yards, see what you can do. Who knows? Well, and even if you're Coach Good, you're thinking, okay, my offense is moving the ball. I'm going to show confidence in him by letting him go fourth down, even if it's you know if it's manageable. I exactly. Feel. There's the snap. Looking to the left side. Pass is caught. Richardson, and he is tackled. It'll be a first down for Lake Central. And I could be wrong on this. That might be the first first down of the night via the pass. I think so. Yep. You know, a couple of plays before that, they ran number one. That's Richardson, I believe. Yep, number yeah. one. And LJ Richardson. They ran him on a fade, and then they just came back because the co coverage was way off for, on a little hitch to get that first down. Nice job softening up the defense there by LC. Kwiatkowski looking to throw again. Left side looking for Richardson. Pass is caught. Up to the five and tackle inside the five. Big gain, Lake Central. And just to your point, Rick, now you had a comeback, and now you send him over the top, and then he had him about three or four yards. I mean, that's just great coaching, great play calling, knowing, hey, my guy's going to beat your guy. Now you're going to bite on this comeback, a little double move, and I'm out. Ball on the three-yard line, first and goal for Lake Central. This is the spark they needed coming right out of halftime, too, is why I, I, Barring mistakes, you got to get this in the end zone here. <laughs> Three wide receivers all wide across the field. And we've got a whistle and a little bit of a bumpy play there, it looked like. Possibly on the defense, looks like the ref pointing towards. Yeah, yeah the referee on the near, on the. Defense. So this is where Lake Central kind of taking advantage of now the miscues by Crown Point. Yeah, you had some busted coverage. Now you got a penalty. To Doug's point, this is exactly what they needed coming out of this uh, second half. They had a busted game. Uh, we'll, we'll go play. to the play. Sorry, well, sorry. We'll it, looked to, like, it looked like the, the running back and the quarterback were kind of bumping into yeah. each other yes. on the exchange. <laughs> so Crumb Point really bailed them out on mm -hmm. that. So first and goal again, this time from the two. Kwiatkowski runs to the left, gets tackled by Jones at the one-yard line. 
Jacob Jones in there on that tackle. That's pretty impressive, but now you get to the one yard line and it's second down. I think you go here with that read option, you know, that power read option and just Kukowski right up the middle. I, I, one yard, put your shoulder down. I, I, I don't see why you, you shy away from that play. I shall take your word for it. We'll find out what happens here in just a moment. If I'm right, you owe me five bucks. <laughs> <laughs> Chris Ramirez, that uh, that's on you, sir. <laughs> Great executive producer. And Kwiatkowski keeps, runs ahead, and touchdown, Lake Central. I was pretty close. There was no read option involved, but he was right up the center. I mean, it, the way he's been running up the middle, it, regardless, one yard should have been it. You got changed for a 20? <laughs> no, but the 20 does. That works. <laughs> So like Central on the board and momentum squarely in the blue column right now. And the Lake Central student section directly in front of us, really covering all the way from about the 20 to the 20. Yeah, and in, in, in honestly, I, I'm intrigued to see how Crown Point reacts. They haven't been in a ball game like this. You know, they haven't been, been in a, a one ball, I mean, a one scoring uh, ball game in the second half. You know, I know it's only week four. And we're going for two here. Oh, here we go. Wikowski gets tackled around the 10 yard line. Momentum gets stopped. So you're on the board. I mean, it, it's interesting play to try to make it a 15 to try to bring it within a seven point game. But at this point, momentum is building on your side. But we're going to step aside for just a moment. You're watching Game Night, built by Von Tobel on the Region Sports Network, the only game in town. When life takes you places and you can't get to the store, shop online with Strack and Van Til to go. Our to go service is easy to use and it can save you time and money. Once your order is in, our own Strack and Van Til team preps your order with care. For delivery or pickup, enjoy the convenience of letting our to go team shop for you. Enjoy your special moments. Sign up online today at shop.strackandvantil.com. Hi, I'm Crowell Company's Lantern Man. I'll cover your motorcycle. I'll be with you on the water. I'll be with you on the snow. I'll cover your insurance needs wherever you go. I'll be at Crowell Agency from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. As Crowell Company's Lantern Man, I'm your insurance superhero. Crowell Company's, the insurance professionals in Highland, Merrillville, and Michigan City. Welcome back to game night here on the Region Sports Network. A Quintel kickoff brought to you by Quintel Incorporated. A return from Crown Point, and then all of a sudden, right around that 30 yard line, there was an explosion that took place on the defense. Yeah, big hit from that LC uh, coverage team. Again, are they, are they building some momentum here? You know, you get a touchdown, big hit on some special teams. Can your defense come out and continue that, get you the ball back, and then your, your offense, the past two times your offense has had the ball, they've had it at the one-yard line. Here are your Gladys Law Group lineups for the second half of the Crown Point Bulldogs offensively. Noah Ehrlich in at quarterback. Larry Ellison, the running back. Your receivers, Cam Sorcy, Landon Delich, Nick Soley, who's got a touchdown tonight. And then Seamus Molaski. Your starting line after this play here as Ellison runs to that left side. Able to get a few yards here before he is tackled. So that offensive line. Ilya Paviadegis, Jeff Machetti, Nathan Gregory, Austin Rivera, and Paul Clark. And then your Lake Central defense on that defensive line. You got Jamon Williams, Tyrone Sussner, and Christian Gavin. And the linebacker core, Chris Gavin, Jeffrey Lucas, Tyler Besich, and Matt Penman. And then in the backfield, Ryder Fernandez, Mylon Davis, Amarian Brooks, and Michael Leake. So first and 10 here from the 37. Crown Point trying to answer after giving up their first score of the game. Passes underneath solely and a big tackle made at the 40-yard line. A pickup of two, or three, excuse me, on the play. And going back to that first, you know, that Ellison run there. I mean, they had a lot of success with that at the end of the first half. And that's something Lake Central needs to make sure they keep an eye out because they did struggle with that. And, and, and again, I talked about it. That run game here in the second half for Crown Point they got to continue to keep shutting that down, but they keep having success with that off-tackle run with Ellison. Those starters are brought to you by Gladish Law Group. Visit dgladishlaw.com or call 219-838-1900. There's the run ahead. 
And Ellison is going to be about a yard shy of the first down. So this will bring up third down here. So we'll see. We talked about the third down conversions during the host connection halftime report. So we'll see how Lake Central can stand up here on third down. Looks like Lake Central's lined up off sides. Oh, they didn't call it. Ellison through for the first down. Gets up to the 45-yard line after he picks up that first down. Big gain for Ellison up to the 44-yard line. Yeah, and much different than the first half. You know, we were talking about third and long. That was third and one. So, yeah, much harder to stop, obviously, third right. moment you got Ellison on that. So, Lake Central needs to find themselves, you know, putting crown point back in those kind of positions. Well, setting up those third and long starts right here. Yes. First and ten from the 44 for crown point. Trying to get that momentum back on their side a little bit. Gibbs in motion. Comes across. Ehrlich runs to the left side. He says, I got wheels too. Look at me go. Breaks away. Has to get through a tackle and take it out across the 10-yard line. One of the underrated parts of Noah Ehrlich's game is the run game. That was the same exact play that he scored on in the first half. They bring Gibbs in motion there at the end, have him as a lead blocker on the read option. Huge hole opened up in the lane and uh, Ehrlich showing that he's not just a guy that's just going to stand back there in the pocket he can be a dual threat guy as well trying to make quick work here in the third quarter running ahead Ellison is he across the line no indication they're going to say he's short of the goal line Crown point a couple times on this uh, drive here has gone to like a kind of an overloaded bunch set where they've got a receiver and then three guys, a tight end on the line of scrimmage and then two guys on the wing right there and they're just running that off tackle to that overloaded side and if they're lined up in it again here, LC's had a tough time stopping it. Quarterback keep, kind of stumbles, runs ahead. Like and their signal touchdown. Yeah, he, he was short, but, I mean, just well awareness. He reached that ball out right over the goal line. Oh, they're, they're huddling we, up right now. And we can uh, – the official on the near side, near the pylon, indicated touchdown. We will await a potential announcement here. Oh, yep. Looks like they gave it to him. Yep, so the touchdown is good for the Crown Point Bulldogs. And it looks like they are going to set up for a two-point conversion here. So as it stands, 21-6, your score. Just under four minutes to go here in this third quarter. Flip on the left side and running in for the two-point conversion. It's Jacob Jones. It was number five, Jacob Jones. So make it 23-6, your score. You're watching Game Night, built by Von Tobel on the Region Sports Network, the only game in town. From schools to stadiums, hospitals, and bridges, everywhere you look, Union Carpenters are building Indiana. With jobs and skilled trades in high demand, there's never been a better time to start building your future. As an apprentice, you'll earn a debt-free college degree, earn while you learn, and receive great benefits like health care and retirement. So what are you waiting for? Visit Carpenters.com to learn more. Visit Carpenters.com and start building your future today. Thinking about what to do after high school? Consider a career with Boilermakers Local 374. As a Boilermaker apprentice, you'll earn while you learn. We offer excellent wages and benefits, and as part of our no-cost hands-on apprenticeship program, you'll learn from the best in state-of-the-art training centers and on the job. Become a union Boilermaker and get on your way to a great career. Find out more, visit www.local374.org or call 219-845-1000. Welcome back to Game Night here on the Region Sports Network. We've got a Quintel kickoff brought to you by Quintel Incorporated, specializing in the reconditioning, repair, and remanufacturing of heat exchangers. So the kick was away, and Lake Central able to take over. It's not going to be the greatest of field positions, right around the 12-yard line. Now, I, I could be wrong, 
That looked like it was angling very close to potentially yeah. going out of bounds. It was very, very close there. I, I mean, he caught it right there about, what, two-yard line right on the edge of the sideline. I mean, it was close. I mean, compared to this, you'd rather have the touchback as well. So potentially a learning moment. But sometimes when you get in the heat of uh, the exchange here as Brooks gets tackled for a loss at the 10-yard line here, nothing to do for him as – Seamus Molaski in on the tackle for the Bulldogs. Molaski also the starting tight end as well. So coming into today, four total tackles and a sack. Making a big tackle there. Second time we've called his name on defense tonight. Yeah. So unofficially we'll say six total tackles, but I don't, you know, I don't I don't keep those stats for people much smarter than I. Kwiatkowski keeps again, trying to run out to the left side. Grabs a few yards here out near the 20. They're going to say down at the 19-yard line. It's really interesting. If you watched Lake Central at all last year, the perception would have been you had, you know, two quarterbacks that were being used by Rick Good. And you felt like Trace Kwiatkowski might have been the quarterback that you used more on your passing game. And then Johnny Sorensen, who's now at Holbert, was more of your rushing QB. Kwiatkowski's kind of turning that table a little bit and changing that narrative a little bit here tonight. Yeah, I mean, right there, that was actually the same play that Crown Point just had that huge yeah. run with Noah Ehrlich on. And uh, Kwiatkowski, he's really been great on his feet tonight. He's really kept them in the game, been a one-man offense almost. Give us to Brooks. He bounces off one tackle and is still tackled for a huge loss here, almost back to the original line of scrimmage. It's just not working on that side for Lake Central tonight. You're starting to see another spark here with the Crown Point yeah. Bulldogs defense here. I, I mean, they 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 went probably to the side and said, look, we're taking away the read option. That, that, mm -hmm. If anything else, beat us on anything else, not the read option. And, uh, I, again, you talked about swarming earlier. Rick, that's exactly what this defense is doing is swarming. Yeah, that was a great possession for the Crown Point defense. They hand forced the Lake Central offense to punt in a couple possessions so now they're going to get the ball in plus territory and set their offense up for another quick score. Triple Baldwin will punt it away in the air going to be taken right around that 40 yard line it'll be officially marked at the 41 yard line so that's where Crown Point will take over and the usual narrative for the Crown Point Bulldogs when they start a possession it's usually a pretty good field yeah. position. <laughs> Yeah, here, I mean, here they are again. Yeah, again, it, Lake Central's done well. I mean, they, they have. Obviously, they've given up another touchdown here, but they've done well when Crown Point has been around the 40-yard line. Um, you know, it, it's something with this defense that has been stopping the, the big plays. They've been stopping the run game. But, but again, it seems like Crown Point offense is starting to come alive. See with Region Sports after the game as we send it back to the Centier Bank studio. RSN will recap all of tonight's action from around the region from the Centier Bank studio. Studio always popping. Ehrlich looks to throw. Up the middle. Pass is complete right around that 30-yard line. And the pick is by, or the pickup is by Delich. Number 11. That'll move the chains for another crown point first down. Yeah, nice job by Ehrlich. A little RPO there. He had the option, the run pass option. He had the option either to hand the ball off to Ellison there on a counter, but he saw the linebacker kind of step up. The window was wide open. Delich occupied it. And a quick little pitch and catch for a first down. Man in motion, Ehrlich stepping up, up the middle. It's almost picked off, off the hands. Trying to get the number there. That's 44 for Lake Central. Tyler Bessage. You know, Ehrlich, he's had a great game, but there have been a couple throws in this game where he's kind of stared guys down, and yeah. he's gone away with what should have been easy interceptions. He, he should have two interceptions in this game, and, you know, LC has, you know, but part of it is on LC to actually convert these interceptions. But Ehrlich, he's got to be a little bit better against better competition to not stare down guys and to be able to see all the defenders. And off is to Ellison, who has nothing doing, gets a few yards up to the 31 yard line. So back to that, really, that original line of scrimmage there. So we're under a minute to play here in the third quarter. And we, I mean, Coming in, we haven't talked about it this way very much, but this is a top 10 matchup here in the region today. Lake yep. Central number eight, Crown Point number one in our RSN top 10 poll. And yes, when you think about you know the way this 
this season has gone so far. I mean, we're only in week four, so one-third of the season underway. Obviously, Crown Point is going to be a heavy favorite in any matchup they're in. And so far, playing in one of the closest ball games that they've had so far this season as a timeout taken with 20.9 seconds here in the third quarter. We'll take it with them. You're watching Game Night, built by Von Tobel on the Region Sports Network, the only game in town. Are you a builder, remodeler, or homeowner? If so, you need quality materials at the right price. Whether you're just getting started or a seasoned pro, Von Tobel's friendly and knowledgeable staff can help. And since we're 100% employee-owned, every time you come in, you're dealing with an owner. We have a great selection for kitchen, bath, flooring, decking, and more. Plus, we offer free design consults to help you with your next project. Scan or visit vontobels.com today to book your free consultation. Von Tobel, building better together. Welcome back. 20 seconds left here in the third quarter here on game night. Built by Von Tobel on the Region Sports Network. Our economy electric heating and cooling game night forecast. It is still a really comfortable and yet breezy 63 degrees outside. It says it's partly cloudy. I don't see any clouds in the sky, but I also wear glasses, so I can't <laughs> see all that well. So I don't know if you guys can see something a little bit better that I cannot. Feels cool. a lot better than 95 <laughs> degrees, oh, I'll tell you that. You have no idea, <laughs> sir, especially for us fat guys. <laughs> That's brought to you by Kind Electric Heating and, Coo Heating and Cooling, keeping you cozy in the winter and cool in the summer. Ehrlich, left side, pass complete. And that'll be a first down for the Bulldogs. Delich. Delich out good. there across. He's really been he, he's really the mo one of the more reliable guys when you absolutely need that first down it always seems to be Landon Delich. Well he he runs routes really good. I, mm -hmm. I mean, you know, even on that is he was, you know, stretching him out like he's running a streak. He put his foot in the ground and just turned. And but great timing by Noah too as well. I mean, he's throwing it before he's even turning and he's catching it. You know, the DB has no chance. And that is the end of the third quarter. That's the end of the third quarter. Thank you, Larry. <laughs> Still getting used to that ref being mic'd up, I'll tell you that. <laughs> We're going to step aside. You're watching Game Night on the Region Sports Network, brought to you by Von Tobel on the Region Sports Network, the only game in town. Have you checked out Centier Bank's student checking account? This no-fee checking account is perfect for students and teens ages 14 to 24 and comes with all the features you need to succeed, such as a debit card, digital banking, and automatic deposit. Send to your bank and help you start establishing good spending habits today for your better tomorrow. For more information, visit sendtier.com slash student checking or visit your local branch. If you are under the age of 18, your parent or guardian must also sign on the Send to your student checking account. At the age of 25, your account will automatically convert to the Send to your checking account. You must deposit $25 to open this account. This account is not eligible for overdraft advantage. Member FDIC. Welcome back to Game Night, built by Von Tobel on the Region Sports Network. Start of the fourth quarter, Crown Point Bulldogs with the football. Ellison with the carry up the middle, stopped immediately right around that 15-yard line. Tyler Besich in on the tackle yet again. He's had a pretty impressive night. Once he gets into that secondary pass, the defensive line, he's really been there to kind of stop any momentum. There he is. Again, this is a, you know Lake Central Demon. We've got to have a little bend, don't break mentality on this drive right now. I, I mean, you put another one on the board here for Crown Point, it, it's basically pulling it away. 11-25 here in the fourth quarter. They're waiting for the clock to wind down here. Ehrlich runs out to his right. He has room, some room to run. He's waiting to throw. Throws ahead. Pass. Is caught. Is caught. Wow, what a great throw. <laughs> and it's Landon Delage. Wow. I, I mean, you want to talk about a, a throw. That safety was technically on the sideline side of him, and he rolled out, and he threw it behind him. 
and Delich just kind of stopped and, and caught it. I mean, again, when, when Noah's rolling out and his feet are moving, he makes some remarkable throws. It was almost like a Madden glitch or something. <laughs> I mean, the ball was just there. It looked like it went through a defender. Great play by Early, keeping the play alive, buying time, keeping his eyes downfield. And uh, for the LC defense, you can't really do anything about that. The right. coverage was good. It's just great offense. And this is where, you know, we've been touting Lake Central defense all night. We were talking about the struggles that Crown Point off. You had a feeling though that it was gonna it was gonna flip at some point. Little botch on the extra point. Ehrlich throws ahead. Oh, we got and it. And it is good for a two point conversion. You know things are going right on yeah. your side when you got a play that's like that. Looked like Seamus Molaski in on the catch. There was potential for a botched kick, and it turns into a two point conversion. And Lake Central's got somebody down. But he's up and moving now. He'll hobble off the field. But, man, oh, man, things are really starting to run your way for the Crown Point Bulldogs. We'll step aside for just a moment. You're watching Game Night. Built by Von Tobel on the Region Sports Network, the only game in town. With electrical services from Economy Electric Heating and Cooling, you can radiate the perfect amount of light and energy into your home. From rewiring and code upgrades to ceiling fans, lighting, security, and more, Economy Electric Heating and Cooling's trained electricians will make sure you can enjoy your home on full power all the time. For a free estimate on electrical work, call Economy Electric Heating and Cooling at 219-923-4441, and you can visit them on the web at 4ajobdoneright.com. That's the number 4ajobdoneright.com. Welcome back to Game Night here on the Region Sports Network. We're presented by Von Tobel. Von Tobel with locations in Valparaiso, Sherryville, and Michigan City. Check out VonTobel.com for more information. We'd also like to remind everyone that video or that video of tonight's game is presented by American Community Bank with locations in Sherryville, Crown Point, Dyer, Hammond, and Munster. American Community Bank is Northwest Indiana's local neighborhood bank. Visit ACBanker.com to find out more information. I think we came back with that replay, or have we showed that yet? All right, Justin Cole working that replay for you on that two-point conversion that looked like it was going to be a blown-up kick and then turned into a two-point conversion and a little pass here out to the left side, bouncing off the tackle, getting some positive, still staying uh, in bounds there to get some even more positive yardage. Looks like it's going to be a first down for Lake Central. Looks yep. like it was Richardson out there. Yeah, number one Richardson. First time we've seen that, too, tonight from Lake Central. I, you know, we were talking about it a little bit earlier. It almost seemed like they were kind of running plays over and over the same play. It's the first time we saw a nice little, you know, wide receiver screen, quick pass. And, uh, again, you got some positive yards out of it. So, hey, this drive, we, they may be opening up the playbook a little bit more. I mean, they're going to have to start airing it out a bit if yeah. they want to have any shots, any hope. Kwiatkowski, right side, near side. Catch is made. And tackle made by number 49 for the Bulldogs. That is Lehman Cody. I'm sorry, Cody Lehman, excuse me. They had it reversed. One, one thing about that two-point conversion, it made it a 25-point game. So it, was, it went from a three-possession game at 24 points to a four-possession game. And I know that with the way LC's moved the ball tonight, scoring three times, let alone four, is, is hard. Yeah. So, And plus then you got to get multiple. So... Again, you know, little things like that can actually impact a game. So, tough sledding here for LC. Pass out to the right side. A little bit of a awkward throw. We got some extracurriculars out on that far side of the field. Been a little bit of a chippy game. I, yeah. I mean, I mean, I mean you guys are to be been, expected. You guys have been out there. This is a rivalry game. You know, what What, what do you actually get said I, I, I rescind my question because we can't, we can't repeat <laughs> those things on the The thing, air. though, is, is, you know, I mean, they've been playing with each other. Even going back to the senior. I mean, they've been oh playing God, against yeah. each other in middle, Bob Warner probably, middle school, you know, and uh, now throughout high school. So I, you expect these big rivalry games to kind of get chippy a little bit. With social media nowadays, all these kids yeah. probably know each other as well. So, I mean, I'm sure that there's, uh, yeah. 
Throw up the middle, pass is caught up ahead. Pass is complete. They're going to say down at the 39-yard line, but there is a flag on the play. I think I saw a preliminary signal for roughing the passer, perhaps. Okay. I believe the catch was made by number yep. 16 for Lake Good Central. Call Rick. Trevor Kubacki may have had that catch. That was a really nice pass by yeah. Kwiatkowski. He put that right on the money, right in stride. All while taking a huge shot from Paul Clark or from Will Clark, excuse yeah. me. I would have liked to see an LC come out a little bit sooner with this style of offense that they mm -hmm. had. You know, kind of slinging it across the field. You know, some short wide receivers get your athletes the ball, let them get running. And we didn't see a lot of that for the first half and even you know throughout the third quarter. So Lake Central in some really good field position here up to the 19-yard line. Try to get something still going here. We talked about, you know, just as you said, it's going to be hard to get four, but, you know, Crown Point is able to give them some yardage on penalties. They'll take it. Looking out to the left, going to the end zone, and just out of the hands of the defender out there. It's like it was Jalen Kelly on the Crown Point defense. Well, also, one thing is these teams are in the same sectional, and oh, yeah. they yeah. could end up playing each other again. So, you know, you want if you're the coaching staff here for LC, even though this game might be a little bit out of reach at this point, you want to see what you can do against this common point defense where you can actually have success because you might see these guys down the road again, and you're going to need to be able to look at this film and take things away from it and be able to go forward. Absolutely. 100% correct. Keep again for Kwiatkowski, who runs up the middle and gets tackled out across the 20. Lake Central tonight is also playing their third home game in a row. They will head out to Laporte next week. So long were, drive. I mean, they're, yeah, that is a very <laughs> long drive. Uh, so they, I mean, likely. I mean, this game is far from over at this point. Still 10 minutes to go in the game. As of right now, they have split those home games, losing to Providence Catholic and then beating Portage last week by a one-point score, 21 to 20. In jeopardy of dropping here tonight. Their next home game will be the 22nd. That'll be homecoming night against Michigan City. For the Bulldogs, they were enjoying two weeks of home field advantage as Kwiatkowski looking for someone. Passes up and is caught in the end zone off the tip. Trevor Kubacki. You know, nice job by Kwiatkowski there, keeping the play alive, buying time, letting his receivers kind of get behind the defense. Let's see, we got the replay going here. Yeah, great job. He's keeping his eyes downfield. Nice tip there, but great job by, oh, how do you pronounce this? <laughs> What's the? Kubaki? Kubaki. Uh, Kubaki, yeah. Kubaki. Great job by him keeping the concentration, the hand-eye yeah. coordination off the tip to be able to reel that one in. A couple big catches for him on that drive. Yeah, and I mean, he's been running, obviously, Kotowski all night. So what that did, I, I liked how he kind of rolled out. It looked like he was about to run, and it kind of bit that cornerback in just a little bit. Going for two. Kwiatkowski with some time. Feels the pressure, and gets taken down on the two-point conversion. So that will leave it a 31-12 to ball game. And we will step aside for just a moment. You're watching Game Night, built by Von Tobel on the Region Sports Network, the only game in town. Develop skills that will last for a lifetime with an apprenticeship with the Bricklayers and Allied Craft Workers Local 4, Indiana, Kentucky. The apprenticeship and training program is committed to developing highly skilled bricklayers, terrazzo workers, and ceramic tile setters to provide the construction industry with the best hands in the business. If you are currently working non-union and want better pay with benefits, or if you think learning a new skill with a paid apprenticeship while you earn your associate's degree is the right path for you, visit baclocal4.org slash training to learn more about the the apprenticeship program. Are you built to succeed? Flip the switch, a light turns on. Press the button, machines and instruments come to life. Touch the screen, communicate with the world. Simple tasks, guaranteed results every second of every day. That's the power of power. And that's the power brought to you by the NECA contractors and electrical workers of Local 531.
Welcome back to game night. This is a Quintel kickoff. This kickoff and all kickoffs are presented by Quintel Incorporated. Handling jobs of all sizes throughout the country since 1994. And it'll start with a touchback. Gentlemen, we do have three awards we're going to hand out at the conclusion of this one. And we got a little, uh, probably about 10-ish minutes before that happens. But we got the Crow Company's Lantern Man superhero of the game. The Crow Companies are the insurance superheroes. We've got the Boilermakers Local 374 Blue Collar Player of the Game brought to you by Boilermakers Local 374. Earn about a learn about apprenticeship programs and more at local374.org. And then we stay with us as we will have the proud unit home play of the game presented by IKORCC, the Indiana, Kentucky, Ohio Regional Council of Carpenters. Thanks to Travis Williams for checking in there. He's still checking in here in the broadcast booth with us. Hanging out, watching a great football game here tonight. 31 12, your score in favor of the Bulldogs over. The Indians of Lake Central. Strong point takes over here. Ehrlich looking to throw. Feels some pressure on his right side. Throws ahead. Pass is caught. Or oh, it is dropped. It was in the basket of Landon Delich, who usually is so reliable. That's why I was automatically going with the catch call. Just popped out of those hands. Man, what a throw from early. Yeah. Put, put it right in this bread basket on the move, going to his left. As a righty quarterback, that can be a tough throw because yeah. um, you usually want to roll you know, to the th arm that you're dominant with as a quarterback. Oh, and we got a hold. Oh, we do have a flag on the play. I don't think I didn't see that. I didn't no, see I a flag on the play at all. So, yeah, it'll be a holding. So that call, so the incomplete pass does not uh, affect Noah Ehrlich's stats. You know, if you're LC, there's nine and a half minutes here, and you got two timeouts. That's why points yeah. push back. I mean, you, you I'm shocked. Uh, crazier that things have happened. I'm shocked they didn't kick the onside. I think Crown Point yes. was even I ready for the Crown onside. Crown Point was playing onside. I was surprised <laughs> they didn't do an onside as yeah. well. So we have a switch here for Crown Point. Looks like the official says something about I don't know if it's like his shoes weren't right or something. I don't know. He was pointing to the ground and then he had a switch. And off is to Ellison, who's got room to run. He meets the the linebacker position right at the line of scrimmage there. Nice hard run. I mean, you got 12 yards back on that, making it second and eight. I, I mean, that's a great up-the-gut run by Ellison. I mean, keeping his feet moving, too. I mean, he took on the linebacker. and he, You know, the big thing with running backs, you never go down on the first hit. And, I mean, we've been seeing that from Ellison all night. Ellison, he's not a big guy, but he's got some power to him. He oh, yeah. doesn't go down easily. 5'9", 165 pounds, the junior. That's the thing for this Crown Point team. you got a junior running back that is solid. you got a junior quarterback that is solid. Pass out to the right side, trying to stay in bounds, but tiptoes the line and steps out of bounds. It looks like solely out there. Talked about Lake Central going on the road next week after three straight home games. Crown Point had two home games. They're on the road this week. They'll be on the road next week as well against the Portage Indians. So the uh, the gauntlet continues for Portage. They have Maryville tonight and get Crown Point next week. Tough two weeks. Yeah, I say, if I'm the AD over there, I want to – St. Germain, I want to maybe move some things around a little bit and change that order. And now we've got another holding call against the offense. That's twice now. I never yeah. saw a flag even come out on the field, actually. No, so. I didn't either. Well, Can Crown Point hurting themselves here. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, to your point about Portage, I mean, the Doolin Conference, there's, <laughs> yeah, it's always grueling. tough. You know, I think LC might have thought last week with Portage they kind of had maybe a little bit of a softer week, and then you saw them, they had to fight by the skin of their teeth to win. So it just goes to show you in a conference like the Doolin that's so good, so deep, you don't get weeks off. Every game is hard. Well, and I got to, we did that preseason pigskin party over at Set em Up in Griffith, and I had a chance to talk to some of these players from Lake Central and Xavier Williams being one of them, number 26, uh, the running back not in tonight. But one of his things is that he wants to make sure Lake Central is back kind of on the map. He doesn't want Lake Central to be that team that might be considered a bye week for a lot of teams. As this is a breakout run down the far sideline. Jacob Jones oh, there is going no to the end zone, but there is a flag at the 16-yard line, this one may be coming back. Yeah, it looks like the way Noah's acting right now back here. It looks like he may be coming back. Noah Ehrlich hanging around the 10, and it's going to be holding against the Crown Point Bulldogs. The third holding of this possession. Man, oh, man. You talk about trying to put a dagger in this one. 
Change of former Bears uh, announcer Wayne Larravee. We got the the tubas going down over there. <laughs> the legal block is back. Oh, excuse me, illegal blocking back. Hey, that gives some props holding them big tubas <laughs> right. on one foot. That's pretty impressive. I don't know if Scott Stessel can hear us up there, I mean, but... A couple of those kids, the tubers are bigger than them, so yeah. I am impressed. <laughs> I want to say there is... Maybe it's at Clark. Some of the guys that are just... Maybe I think it was the shot putters that they put in a relay race at some point oh. just for <laughs> for jokes over at one of the middle schools. It, Keep things interesting. Yeah. Crown point with their third penalty here of this possession, and Ellison has some room to run ahead, but he finally gets tackled at about the 19-yard line. Oh, there they go again. And they're going again. This is a big uh, big stop, obviously, for Lake Central. I know it's a three-possession game here, but nonetheless, is I, on this possession with how many penalties? About a minute has come off, actually, yeah. on, on the clock only? Okay, I got to look. Okay, so the tubas are dancing with everybody. The cheerleaders are going, and now the LC student section. They're down on the scoreboard, but they're still having some fun. I got my man Jackson Stamplin here with me, hanging out in the press box with us as well. Round point getting some positive yardage on that one after going backwards quite a few times. And off, Al or Erlich er er keeps, excuse me, this one almost intercepted. This is the third almost interception yeah. of the night. Linebacker's been uh, in some great position, and unfortunately they just haven't came up with any. I mean, that's, that's, that's three interceptions on the night if the linebacker's just able to pull those in. Jeffrey Lucas, it got just out of the fingertips. Thankfully for Lake Central, it didn't go into the hands of anyone off the deflection. You know, Erlich, he's not... You know, we saw that with the, the Delich touchdown over there. He's not afraid to take chances with the ball. And sometimes you get lucky and the defense drops a pick. But I, mean, I think Coach Buzz going forward might want to see him be a little bit more careful. Don't make those mistakes. you got a very good team. You don't want to hurt your own team by trying to do too much sometimes. And we've got a timeout taken as there was a lot of movement yeah. at the start of that play. The timeout taken by Crown Point. We're going to keep it right here. We talked about those awards that we're going to hand out. Also, Mayor Pete Land of the Crown Point Paints Department are proud to support Crown Point Bulldog football and say, Go Bulldogs! Crown Point remains dedicated to preserving history, celebrating everyday life, providing the best in-city services, and encouraging smart growth. Mayor Land and the Pace team invite everyone to Bulldog Park for Oktoberfest on October 6th and 7th. Join us for German Music and Fair. For more information, contact the Pace Department at 219-661-2271. Well, I know we are, we're we're going to be busy on the 6th. We have uh, Friday Night Football to take care of personally, but they can put on uh, Region Sports Network over at, uh, at Bulldog Park, and people can be tuned in and listening. But uh, maybe we can go join them over on the 7th. I don't know. Yeah, slap us on the jumbotron. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you know, when we were doing the uh, Cal Ripken World Series, uh, one of our sponsors from Station 21, they actually had us on on Station 21. Oh, nice. Oh, yeah, that's, yeah, yeah, that's, nice. that's really awesome. nice of them. So we will see a kick here for Crown Point, and it is Cam Sorcy on to punt. And again, a lot of movement here. This is an interesting formation. Kicks that one ahead back to potentially return this one as it bounces and continues. Actually takes a nice bounce for Lake Central. Doesn't really bounce backwards. It kind of just bounces straight up and straight down. So Lake Central benefits on that. Gets a good starting field position here with seven and a half to go here in the final quarter. Do you think Lake Central takes a shot downfield to the end zone here? Why not? Why not, right? I mean, hey, you score real quick, get an onside kick. I've seen crazier things happen. All right. I mean, I have, but if I'm Lake Central right now, let's try to score quick. Maybe you've been getting a lot of man coverage, one-on-one -on -one coverage. Take a shot. For the record, Doug, you are the analyst, so that's your job to answer that question. I'm, <laughs> I'm the play-by-play -play guy. I don't you got great opinions, too. <laughs> that's debatable. <laughs> Kwiatkowski makes a little turn, throws up ahead, has a receiver, and gets it down. Before he's tackled, big reception for Lake Central. The pass is caught. Trying to, he comes up a little bit hurt. Looks like number 13 for Lake Central. That's James Graham the third. 
Coming into the night, nine catches, 198 yards and three tutties. Yeah, they faked a quick wide receiver screen, hit the, you know, Graham went deep after he faked his block. That type of play is great against man coverage because you get the guys to bite because they have to. They're in man. And so nice play by the LC offensive coordinator taking that shot downfield much to Doug's point. So the answer to your question, Doug, is uh, yes. Yes. <laughs> This play, though, not much to do. So second and 11 for Lake Central here. Will Clark in on the tackle. Haven't mentioned his name much tonight, but he's one of the uh, mainstays here on this Crown Point defense. So Lake Central with another opportunity here, second down. Kukowski looking to pass, has some time, rolls out to the right, going towards the sideline, and it is intercepted. He had it open in the end zone, but the interception made, looks like by Tom Fanton. Yeah, and it looked like, unfortunately, he had a guy in the, it, almost to the end zone that was wide open, but, I mean, that, that's a big, big play by the Crown Point Bulldogs to take out any kind of chance that Lake Central would have had. So to be fair, I mean, it's easy for us to see up here. We have, yeah. a, we have, a, we have a good angle of this field. It's kind of hard to see down at field level, I would imagine. But still, that's something if you're Coach Good, you have a junior quarterback, you want him to be able to see down the field a little bit more quickly than, than just kind of sticking to, okay, I found what I want to go to and make that try to make that happen. Yeah, yeah he did a great job keeping the play alive. He's just got to be able to not lock on to one receiver. He was locked on to number six, his tight end, and he couldn't see the guy that was streaking towards the end zone potentially for a touchdown. How impressed have you guys been with the pass game tonight overall? We saw the wheels from Kwiatkowski, and now all of a sudden it's starting to turn into a passing game here for, for Kwiatkowski as Ehrlich says, go, go, go. Pass is going to be gonna considered. Who gonna, comes up with wow. it? It's going to be complete, it looks like, for Crown Point. Looks also, like it might have been Gibbs on the reception. We also, we're going to get uh, roughing the passer here as well against LC. Ehrlich again, not afraid to throw the ball into a tight window. Roughing the passer, defense, penalty be 15 yards from the end of the run. First down, one. You know what's interesting? For the first three weeks, I did not see a roughing the passer call. No. And now I've seen two tonight. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, have not I feel like that's something that we see too often in high school. I could be wrong. I mean, I don't, I, I don't see. I don't see it that often. I guess. No, I don't see that. I mean, I'm, well, high school obviously is much more run dominant. Yeah. And a lot of the passes are quicker, so the quarterbacks aren't keeping the ball for that long to maybe let the defense uh, get the opportunity to rough them. But in this game, we've seen the quarterbacks take deep drops and keep the ball for almost 10 seconds yep. in their hands sometimes. So maybe that could be part of it as well. And, you know, these are high school kids. I don't think any defender is intentionally trying to take anybody out. But sometimes you're out there, you're trying to make a play, and then, you know, things happen. It's a it's a very fast, uh, tough game. So Credit to the offensive lines. I mean, you talk about holding the ball for six, seven seconds back there. I mean, the offensive line on both sides has been giving them a lot of time. Usually the best friends of the quarterback. Five best friends for the evening. You know, one of the things I had asked uh, Jay Simmons last week, and it felt like a stupid question at the time. However, I, I do think there are, you'll understand when I ask it. But there was a point to the question, and we didn't get a chance to really dive in on it here. We talked about as Soli makes this pass or this catch here right across midfield up to the 49. It'll be a yard short of a first down, so it's third and one coming up here. We talked earlier about how Crumpwin hasn't really played a game close like this for the good chunk of the game. Obviously, it's the lead's grown a little bit for the Bulldogs since we talked about that part, but the we talked about conditioning. So, a lot of these games, we did see the starters get pulled kind of maybe mid-third quarter. Would they be able... I mean, obviously, they're going to... They're high school kids. They're going to get the, the reps that they need, and they're going to have the conditioning as we see a first down run here for the Bulldogs. It doesn't really seem to be a factor here. As we got some, we got penalties here, and it's going to be yeah. against Crown Point here. A late get up on a tackle, and it looks like it's going to be fifty-eight. That's Paul Clark. Tyler Bessage on the tackle. There are several flags. 
But do you get what I'm saying, though? The, oh, of, the, course. The, the, oh, of course. So that's why it sounded like a stupid question at the time. Like, are these guys going to be ready when they when they eventually have to play a game in that fourth quarter? They haven't really seen the fourth quarter very much so far this season. It doesn't seem to be a factor. Well, y- you know, I think if your coach was here, you probably want your team to have to play a, tr- a true four-quarter game before the playoffs. You know, you want Absolutely. to have these guys completely battle-tested the before. Unsportsmanlike conduct against the offense. That goal is 15 yards from the end of the run. It'll be first down from one. You want these, like I was saying, you want these guys completely battle-tested for all situations before the playoffs, before, you know, your win or go home. So, you know, last year, we saw Crown Point kind of run through the regular season pretty much untouched, and then when they got to the playoffs, they played Lafayette Jeff, some adversity, and they ended up losing. So sometimes playing tougher games is better for a team in the long run. Yeah, absolutely is. You want to get battle-tested for sure. And this one is caught out across the 20. And now we have taunting that's going to be called. Landon Delich in on the tackle or in on the catch and we'll have an official who throws the flag as it looked like he kind of gave the uh, the belt signal is what it looked WWE like to me. WWE Championship. Yeah, there you the, go. The, the discount double check. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Aaron Rodgers I, again I, comes up, huh? I guess so. But, I mean, great throw and catch right there. Delich, yeah. again, he's 6'4", and he's got great ball skills. Um, he's got to be a little bit more disciplined there. Right now it doesn't hurt you, but again, you know. So this is, we, we talked about the holds. We talked about the illegal block in the back, and now we're talking about back-to-back unsportsmanlike conduct plays. Crown Point was not a team that got penalized very, I don't have a number in front of me, but I don't, I, the last two weeks I can't think of a time where they got called for too many penalties where yep. it's going to hurt them that much. I mean, if this was a closer ball game, yeah. this would be, I mean, detrimental. I mean, they, they can kind of afford the penalties because they're up 31 to 12. And that might be why they're talking, to be completely. It's a lot <laughs> easier to fair. talk when you're up 19 with four I, minutes to go, to be honest. But but if you're Coach Bazia, you're not oh, happy. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, you're, you're not happy. No. Yeah. Ehrlich looking to throw. Runs to the right side. Pass is going to be caught. It looks like he was out of bounds. Oh, they're going to say out of bounds. So Delich in on the tackle. All right, keep saying tackle in on the reception again. It but makes sense because he is he isn't on defense as well. <laughs> but no, I mean, Bazia, Coach Bazia. I mean, I'm sure he's not pleased, but I think he understands that these are also kids. It's an emotional game. We are winning. The, the game is out of reach at this point. I would say it's safe to say so. We'll clean that stuff up, but I don't think he's going to be, you know, ranting and raving too much right now. I think he's going to let these guys enjoy the win and maybe go back to the drawing board tomorrow and kind of clean that up on film. I'm not sure if he's going to have any dance moves in the locker room after tonight. <laughs> maybe I mean, we, maybe not. Know. We'll see. We'll see. Appreciate the Crown Point uh, football Twitter page for updating that here as we've got a whistle and a flag. I, I, I can. Oh, okay. So timeout by time Crown first. Point. So we'll take it with them. You're watching Game Night, built by Von Tobel on the Region Sports Network, the only game in town. When life takes you places and you can't get to the store, shop online with Strack and Van Til to go. Our to-go service is easy to use, and it can save you time and money. Once your order is in, our own Strack and Van Til team preps your order with care. For delivery or pickup, enjoy the convenience of letting our to-go team shop for you. Enjoy your special moments. Sign up online today at shop.strackandvantil.com. Welcome back to game night here on the Region Sports Network, built by Von Tobel. We're, uh, we're watching Coach Buzz's <laughs> dance move. He's a much better football coach than he is a dancer. I, I'm not trying to throw any shade, but you know he picked the right right profession. <laughs> oh, good stuff. You know, I mentioned Station 21 earlier because they were one of our sponsors before. They've actually got a sandwich there that's named after Coach Buzz. Oh. Pass caught. Far sideline. Delich stays in bounds. Now knocked out of bounds right around the 11-yard line. Physical run after the catch there. Breaking a the tackle, putting his shoulder down. I mean, he's still playing hard out there, yeah, you know. I mean, he, you see him talking. I mean, he's not acting like this game is over. He's still going at these guys. 
They're not act. They're not taking the foot off the gas whatsoever there on the Crown Point sideline. Well, yeah, usually running clocks by some point in this, you know, in this point of the game. Crown Point's played in the last couple of weeks. Give here to the left side. Ellison bounces off one tackle and into the end zone. Or do they mark him down short? It is going to be a touchdown. Ellison in on the run. He had the two-point conversion earlier, his first touchdown of the night. And that is the 10th touchdown of the season for Larry Ellison. And the scary thing if you're crown point, just a junior. Yeah, yeah. You ain't lying. I mean, just a powerful run. I, again, it, don't go down on the first contact. Break a tackle. And then just power right into the end zone. Brewers extra point is good. We will step aside. You are watching game night built by Von Tobel on the Region Sports Network, the only game in town. Centrally located in downtown Indianapolis, the Hampton Inn is just steps away from Banker's Life Fieldhouse. Situated at 105 South Meridian Street, shopping, restaurants, entertainment, and many Indianapolis attractions are in near proximity. Hampton Inn has much to offer, including a hot breakfast, high-speed internet access in every room, as well as a gym fitness center. For reservations, the number is 317-261-1200. The website is hamptoninn3.hilton.com. Hampton Inn, Indianapolis, downtown. Are you a builder, remodeler, or homeowner? If so, you need quality materials at the right price. Whether you're just getting started or a seasoned pro, Von Tobel's friendly and knowledgeable staff can help. And since we're 100% employee-owned, every time you come in, you're dealing with an owner. We have a great selection for kitchen, bath, flooring, decking, and more. Plus, we offer free design consults to help you with your next project. Scan or visit VonTobel's.com today to book your free consultation. Von Tobel, building better... Welcome back to Game Night, built by Von Tobel on the Region Sports Network. That is a Quintel kickoff, brought to you by Quintel Incorporated, handling jobs of all sizes throughout the country since 1994. Make sure you stay with Region Sports after the game as we send it back to the Centier Bank Studio. RSN will recap all of tonight's action from around the region, all from the Centier Bank Studio. And then we've also got our awards to hand out. Gentlemen, I don't know if you guys have started thinking about that Crow Company, Lantern Man, superhero of the game. There's been a couple of candidates so far, in my, in my humble opinion. And we've got our proud Union Home Play of the Game presented by IKORCC and our Boilermakers Local 374 Blue Collar Player of the Game. Kwiatkowski looking to air it out. Far side of the field and pass is incomplete. Ooh. Out like around the 20, Richardson was the intended target. It was a good pass by Kwiatkowski. It hit him right in the hands. It was good coverage by number four for Crown Point there. I believe that is... Oh, wait, excuse uh, me? He's, he might, he's a backup, it looks like. Nick Soley, the receiver, is getting some reps on defense. Good coverage. You know, if you're LC, you got to have that one, but yeah. it may be a little too late anyway. So it'll be second down and 10 from the 40-yard line. Just trying to build some momentum as they will head to Laporte next week. So we talked about some of those tiers when it comes to the the DAC and probably Laporte, like Central, probably close in that middle tier potentially, maybe closer for both of them. Uh, you know, it'd be arguable where you fit them in that middle tier. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I think the the Duneland in the middle. I mean, I think you know you got Crown Point and Valpo are sort of the cream of the crop right this now, year, yeah. and. Uh, but that mid-tier, I think, is, you know, you got Michigan City, I think, is very good. They're kind of putting some things together. Uh, they're having a hard time against Valpo tonight, but they're a good team. LC, I still think this team is dangerous. Kwiatkowski got gets a break, and he's going to run. He's got one man to beat around the 10-yard line, and he gets... Uh oh is he short? In for the touchdown! What a great run. Yeah. Put on the burners. There's oh, is there, flag? Is there, there is a flag? There is a flag somewhere on the play. Ooh. I don't see anything on the field, but. It looks like it's about uh, the 50-yard line on the Crown Point yep, sideline. I do line. see it. You're right. We will uh, await the call. It looks like it's going to be holding against Lake Central, potentially. Oof. That's that's rough. Yeah, that, that hurts. A 59-yard run wiped off the board. For Chase oh, Quick. Offense. 
Yeah, that is just, you know, you're trying to just build any kind of momentum you can late in this game against arguably one of the best teams, if not the best team in Northwest Indiana right now. Again, these teams could see each other again in the playoffs. Yeah. Right. I mean, so. seeing that it's still on film, regardless of penalty, you know, mm -hmm. hey, there's some things that work. No, I think I'll see if, you know, if they end up seeing Crown Point in the uh, future. They have some things to build on from this game. They have had some success doing some things defensively to begin the game. They had a lot of success. So it's not all a lost cause. Coming in on the tackle. Kwiatkowski was able to keep loss of two on the play. So it'll be fourth down and 11 here. Now, I, I was a little confused on that last play because the ball was originally on the 41 before the penalty, was it not? Yeah, I, it, I, it, it could have been a spot foul. Yeah, okay, spot so they, foul where the whole ball Okay, was. so they, okay. Ooh, ball, ooh, ooh. Botch there, ah. and that's going to be taken down around the 25-yard line. Looks like it was Seamus Malaski getting there on the tackle. Buck 49 left in this one. Let's see if Crown Point puts their twos in here, if they're going to just roll with the ones for this last minute 50. Who knows? It looked like uh, Logan Hat was strapping up, so okay. I, think, yeah, I think he may be coming in here for a series. Yeah, we've seen Logan Hat a little bit the last couple of weeks, so getting a chance to go here again. Handoff. And that was Tommy Guragno in on the run. Also seeing him as kind of that number two, even though they have listed on the on the two deep Nico Pavlu. Usually we've seen number yeah. twenty, Tommy Guragno as the as the number two in this particular spot when the lead seems pretty comfortable for Crown Point. This is where you're, you're just going to kind of run things out. Hopefully you can get that first down, and that yeah. will pretty much be the ball game. But, you know, I was saying to you guys during the break, this is also the most points that yeah. Crown Point has given up yeah. on the season. So the Lake Central can hang their hats on that, that they were able to get 12 points on the board as we're officially under a minute. And clock continue to roll here. 38-12 is going to likely be your final score but it's been I mean it was overall a, a pretty solid game from Lake Central they had their mistakes and they had a pretty solid defense and you know they had their moments of shine with with the offense but just against some penalties but it's just it's without question this crumb point team even if playing a close game they are they are a force to be reckoned with at this point oh yeah they're very good I think a lot of people thought they'd be the best team in the region coming into this year and so far they've lived up to the billing i mean yeah. they've been very good i think you know the, we'll see them against valpo in a couple weeks and i think that's going to be a huge duelin game it could be oh, the yes. two best teams in the entire northwest indiana um playing each other you know lc like we talked about they have things in this game where they did things well but yeah, penalties turnovers and not being a, and the defense i think they did about as well as they could, but they were out there so long that they just got worn down. Crown Point has a big offensive line, so I'll see th things to, to take, you know, going forward, but not the result they wanted tonight. All right, we're going to step aside. We got awards to hand out on the other side of this break. You're watching Game Night, built by Von Tobel on the Region Sports Network, the only game in town. Some see a student athlete working on a shot. We see a powerful lesson in persistence. Some see a student preparing for success on an exam 
we see a student athlete preparing for success in life. Proud to keep education in front of athletics since 1903. Are you a builder, remodeler, or homeowner? If so, you need quality materials at the right price. Whether you're just getting started or a seasoned pro, Von Tobel's friendly and knowledgeable staff can help. And since we're 100% employee-owned, every time you come in, you're dealing with an owner. We have a great selection for kitchen, bath, flooring, decking, and more. Plus, we offer free design consults to help you with your next project. Scan or visit VonTobel's.com today to book your free consultation. Von Tobel, building better together. When life takes you places and you can't get to the store, shop online with Strack and Van Til to go. Our to go service is easy to use and it can save you time and money. Once your order is in, our own Strack and Van Til team preps your order with care. For delivery or pickup, enjoy the convenience of letting our to go team shop for you. Enjoy your special moments. Sign up online today at shop.strackandvantil.com. Hi, I'm Crowl Company's Lantern Man. I'll cover your motorcycle. I'll be with you on the water. I'll be with you on the snow. I'll cover your insurance needs wherever you go. I'll be at Crowl Agency from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. As Crowl Company's Lantern Man, I'm your insurance superhero. Crowl Companies, the insurance professionals in Highland, Maryville, and Michigan City. From schools to stadiums, hospitals, and bridges, everywhere you look, Union Carpenters are building Indiana. With jobs and skilled trades in high demand, there's never been a better time to start building your future. As an apprentice, you'll earn a debt-free college degree, earn while you learn, and receive great benefits like health care and retirement. So what are you waiting for? Visit Carpenters.com to learn more. Visit Carpenters.com and start building your future today. Thinking about what to do after high school? Consider a career with Boilermakers Local 374. As a Boilermaker apprentice, you'll earn while you learn. We offer excellent wages and benefits, and as part of our no-cost, hands-on apprenticeship program, you'll learn from the best in state-of-the-art training centers and on the job. Become a union Boilermaker and get on your way to a great career. Find out more, visit www.local374.org or call 219-845-1000. Welcome back to game night. Bill Von Tobel on the Region Sports Network. 38-12, your final crown point, improving to 4-0 on the young season and 2-0 in conference play. As promised, we have some awards to hand out. Let's go with our Corral Company's Lantern Man superhero of the game. The Corral Companies are proud to recognize the superheroes on the football field. Yeah, no, our Crow Company's Lantern Superman hero of the game is Noah Ehrlich, the junior quarterback from Crown Point. Two rushing touchdowns, two touchdowns in the air, extended so many plays with his feet, uh, had multiple long runs. I mean, he really was a dominant player tonight on offense. Yeah, we saw Kwiatkowski with some wheels, and we definitely saw Ehrlich with some wheels today in this one as well. Let's go ahead and name our Boilermakers Local 374 Blue Collar Player of the Game. Brought to you by Boilermakers Local 374. Earn why you learn with Boilermakers Local 374. Yeah, and the Blue Collar Player uh, player of the Game is going to go to Chase Kwiatkowski. Uh, run rushing touchdown. I, I, when you talk about running hard, the run game that Lake Central had, it, it was mostly him and using his feet. Uh, extending a lot of plays too as well just like Noah Ergo I mean he was able to roll out he was able to flip hips make passes down the down the field but but when you talk about someone that just played extremely hard you know kind of put his team on his back is it, it, going to go to Chase Kwiatkowski all right we're going to go with our proud unit home play the game presented by IKORCC the Indiana Kentucky Ohio Regional Council of Carpenters learn more at IKORCC.com and I think we have the Travis Williams uh, stamp of approval on this one. We're going to go all the way back to that first quarter and that 41-yard touchdown reception by Nick Soley to get the scoring started for the Crown Point Bulldogs. So we're going to go with that one. we got the replay here for you. Really nice play down to the goal line and in for that opening touchdown to get things started up. And it was... 
I wouldn't say it was all Crown Point from there, but it was mostly Crown Point yeah. pretty much all the way from there. So really nice game by the Crown Point Bulldogs. Again, they improved to 4-0 on the season. 2-0 uh, in conference play. Our executive producer is Chris Ramirez. Our operating manager is Rich Castillo. Our coordinating producer is Claude Martinez. Sports director is Jack Thiel. Your broadcast crew tonight, myself, is Mike Brenner, along with Doug Ashenbaugh and Rick Novak. Gentlemen, really nice job. Always a pleasure to work with you. And then our producer okay. was... Justin Cole, even though he's not on our credits, i got to do this. Justin Cole here doing the producing today. Mike Dewan and Scott Stensel helping out with the camera okay. upstairs today. Big thanks to Coach Bazia and Rick, Rick Good, the coaches of Crown Point and Lake Central, respectively, and uh, Bill Zarula and Chris Enyart, the ADs right. at Crown Point and LC, respectively, helping us get set for everything that we needed, stats and all that stuff for today's ballgame. And, of course, you, the viewers, on YouTube, Facebook, regionsports.com, and IHSAATV.com. Without you all, we wouldn't be able to do what we do, so thank you very much. Stay tuned. We'll have more from the Centier Bank Studio Region Football Wrap-Up a little bit later on. You're watching Game Night, Bill by Von Tobel on the Region Sports Network, the only game in town.